Okay. Or he could be a while. I don't know. Recording in progress. Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the February 2nd meeting of the Historic District Commission. Uh, we've got a quorum of commissioners present tonight, but our chair and vice chair are participating via Zoom. They're both unavailable for tonight's meeting. So the first order of business before we get into introductions and the agenda tonight is to vote to have an interim chair for this meeting. And if somebody could make a motion for an interim chair of one of the members that's present, we will uh, take a roll call vote and hopefully have an interim chair. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to m make a motion that we uh, nominate Margot Doring for the t uh, tonight's interim chair. Second. Second. Okay. So, um, no discussion. I, do we have a discussion? No. So let's just no. do a roll call starting with Karen. Aye. David. Aye. Rich. Aye. You go last. You're not at all. Yes. Uh, yes. Dan. Yes. All right. It's unanimous. Okay. So, you're now chair. Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. So we'll start with an introduction of the members of the board. So to my right, uh, well, I'll do remotely. So John Wyckoff and uh, Reagan Rudick are participating remotely. To my right, we have Dan Brown. Good evening. Mar Martin Ryan. Good evening. On my other side, we have Karen Buffard. Good evening. David Adams. Good evening. And a special welcome to our new city council representative, Rich Blaylock. Thank you very much. Good evening. And Nick ah. McNeil, our principal planner. Good evening. Okay, let me read this. The board's action in these matters has been deemed to be quasi-judicial in nature. If any person believes any member of the board has a conflict of interest, that issue should be raised at this point or it will be deemed waived. Anybody wish to make a comment? No. Okay. Uh, first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the January 5th meeting. May I have a motion or any comments to be made on the minutes at this time? I move that we approve the minutes as presented. I wasn't involved. Oh, Second. Can I, can you hear me? Can I Yes. jump in real fast? Um, at one, one of the pages, hold on, let me see if I can find it. This is Reagan speaking. Um, and shoot. Well, now I can't find it because I don't, have a way to mark it on here. Um, but at one point in the minutes, I was just referred to as Miss Reagan, which okay. would be great if I were a teacher, but. <laughs> yeah. We'll take care of that. Thank you. Okay. So we have a motion from Martin. Any second? Second. Okay. okay. And all those in favor will need to roll call this as well? Uh, yes, because there's okay. two members. Very good. Roll call vote starting online. Reagan? Yes. John? Yes. Karen? Yes. Dave? Aye. Rich? Yes. Martin? Yes. Dan? Yes. Chair votes yes. Okay. Um, I'd like to ask first if there are any recusals or any issues anybody has with any of the projects on the agenda that they need to bring forward at this time? Okay. Um, yes. I, this is Reagan. I will have to recuse myself from Court Street in the administrative approvals. Thank you. All right. I'd also like to, at this time, take care of the request to postpone, which is under work sessions, old business. Request to postpone by uh, 1 Rains Avenue, 31 Rains Avenue, and 203 Maplewood Avenue. So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. Karen, thank you. Any discussion? <clears throat> and a roll call vote on this as well. John? Yes. Reagan? Yes. Dan? Yes. Martin? Yes. Rich? Yes. Dave? Aye. Karen? Yes. Chair votes yes. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to pull 160 Court Street from the administrative approvals. Uh, Nick, would you go through the remainder and we'll vote on those and then deal with Court Street? Sure. Thank you. So we've got four other administrative approvals. <clears throat> the first one being 500 Market Street, which is Unit 7. And it is to remove an exhaust vent on uh, a building uh, located as Unit 7 in 500 Market Street and add two louvers 
um, in a different location. And there's a set of plans that are included that I'll pan down to. Let me just see, can you see it on there? I have to close this. So this is the location of the property here at Nobles Island. This is the unit in the building, images of the building. There is a proposed louver uh, on this section of the building, which is the back. And then um, there's a proposed exhaust louver location over on the side. And there are pretty detailed drawings here. Both these louvers are being painted to match the siding or, or the material, the background. Um, pretty straightforward. Almost didn't need to be here, but it's in Nobles Island and they're painting it to match the siding. Any issues with that? No. Nope. Hearing none, we'll skip 160 Court, 475 Marcy Street. Again, very, uh, very minor application, which is the intention of these administrative approvals. Just get down to it. They're adding a, <clears throat> a vent, another uh, terminal vent on the side wall of this property that fronts on Marcy Street and is a corner lot on Partridge. There is, uh, this is the location on the screen of where this, uh, and it's appropriately <laughs> sized uh, in that red oval, but it, it's located behind this uh, enclosure here uh, on the side of the building. And I think the only thing we might wanna do, because I didn't catch it, but it could be there, is make sure it's painted the color of the siding as a stipulation. Any questions on that? Any objections to the stipulation or concerns? It's consistent, okay. So then 40 Bridge Street, another set of drawings prepared by McHenry Architecture. This uh, has a few more moving parts, but uh, it's pretty simple. There are, are louvers in the back of the building that were previously approved that are being relocated. One is an intake and one is an exhaust uh, vent. There is underground parking in this building, which is presumably what that's for on the back of the building. There's some lighting that's being proposed uh, associated with the future sign of the business. I'll, I'll get this out of the way. Um, okay. There's a sign here on this fence was already previously approved. So these lights are being requested to be mounted on that uh, screen wall, I guess you call it, fence. And that's that's the sign signage that's being uh, proposed, but it's really not jurisdictional to us, the sign itself. We're just showing it, maybe the purpose for the lights. Same along the front um, facade of the building, There's, they're putting lighting out there for the future sign band. And all the fixtures are included here, as well as the, uh, I guess the, the louvers and the termination vent and all the lighting specs. Nothing jumped out at me, but is anybody here in the audience related to this application? Do you want to add anything if I missed something? Only if there's questions. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Okay. Um, last one on the short list here of four is 145 Maplewood Ave. Again, a pretty, pretty minor application. There was a roof deck previously approved. You can see it here on the screen. So this is the new building on the corner of Rains Ave, um, Vaughn Street on the back and Maplewood on the front. This was the size of the roof deck, if you can see the grabber and what they're proposing to do is shrink it uh, in half. It's still got the ability to be expanded in the future because that, that enclosure is already created up there, but their roof deck, it, the active portion is going to be smaller and it's shown here, if you can see my grabber over here is this is the roof deck that's activated. They're proposing to have a, a fire pit uh, installed on there per certainly all life safety requirements and some bollard lighting. So they can use that presumably when it's not light out. Yeah, I think other than maybe just to avoid surprises, we might wanna stipulate that all lighting should be dark sky compliant so we don't end up with that problem. That, that's it for those four. Any questions or discussion? Heinz, welcome. I move that we approve what is presented. Um, with the two stipulations? Yeah, you had the stipulation of the dark sky for the last one? Yep, and painted to match for the, uh, the louver on Marcy, match the siding. So be it. Okay. Second. 
I'll second that motion. Thank you. Any further discussion? A roll call vote then. John? Yes. Reagan? Yes. Karen? Yes. Dave? Aye. Rich? Yes. Martin? Approved. Dan? Yes. And do we need Heinz? No. Okay. Sorry, Heinz, you're an alternate tonight. Uh, Chair votes aye. So that takes care of those. And if we could do 160 Court Street now. Oh, sorry, before, nope, we, yeah. before we move on, I just wanted to compliment the people at 145 Maplewood Avenue. I think the lighting that they did on the Maplewood side of that building and the grounds had turned out very well. Go ahead. Okay. So 160 Court Street, uh, unless I miss something, this is really simple. Um, let me just get that on the screen properly. So the approved design is shown in the top image here of the building that's currently under construction, four-story building on Court Street at 160. This was the design for the, um, the staircase between the building and the Feaster building. So this is the side that faces the Feaster uh, owned by the Portsmouth Housing Authority. And there was a um, design feature of the stairs that there be PVC lattice uh, horizontal and vertical lattice rather than diagonal uh, be installed underneath the staircase and they are requesting presumably for cost saving reasons uh, that that be omitted from the approved design and they're going to they're going to I guess move some landscaping into that space uh, as a more cost effective perhaps alternative that was what I saw wow. Questions, concerns, comments? Okay. okay, make a motion. Somebody want to make a motion? Motion to approve as presented. Second. Thank you, Rich. Um, roll call vote, John? Yes. Karen? Yes. Dan? Yes. Dan. Sorry, <laughs> Dave? Aye. <laughs> Rich? Yes. Martin? Approved. Thank you. Chair votes aye. Good. Okay. That zips us right along to a petition by Stephen P. and Kathy Ann Henson, owners for a property located at Zero Maplewood <coughs> Avenue, wherein permission is requested to allow the construction of a new single family residence with attached garage on a vacant lot as per plans on the file in the planning department. Said property is shown on assessor map. 141 as lot three and lies within the general residence a and historic districts who is here to present Good evening, my name is Michael Keene. I'm the architect for the project Mike Brown is with us tonight. He's going to be the builder and developer and Steve Henson is here also Welcome. So, thank you um, As the petition reads we are proposing to build a new single-family dwelling with an attached garage, all new construction on a vacant lot. The lot's bounded by Maplewood Avenue, Prospect Street, and North School Street, um, each of the three sides. In this elevation, um, basically we're looking at the view from Prospect Street here. So we've turned the house not to front on Maplewood Avenue, but on Prospect Street because of the existing slopes and contours on the site as it slopes from the uh, southwest to the northeast. Um, high in the southwest and low in the northeast. Um, we've been through several workshops. As you know, uh, the changes that you see on this elevation from the previous workshops uh, are that we've uh, realigned the windows on the front elevation so that everything's symmetrical uh, around the front, I mean, around the, uh, around the center window. Uh, we slid the entrance slightly to the left to give us a little bit more room uh, between the entrance and the corner board. And in this elevation, we are showing a new roof hood uh, design that we hadn't previously shown um, in, in the workshops. Uh, our preference is to build this entrance. There are some zoning questions that may be lingering out there. So later in the set, we will show you <coughs> the original design um, also as an alternate if we could get that either approved or at least get some comments back on that. We intend, uh, as we go through the set, that there are more notes on here, but we intend to clad the building with wood clapboards. 
the trim we are showing is all PVC, which we painted in the field. All the um, vents and downspouts, uh, metal gutters, and all of that will be painted in the field to match their backgrounds. So even though, as uh, Commissioner Adams pointed out last time, it looks like we have corner boards running down through our brick foundation. Those were intended to show locations of the downspouts, but those will be painted out to match the brick as they, as they um, move below the water table trim there. Uh, we have two sections of the building that will be clad with wood shingles. That's the lower section of the garage uh, at the North School Street side on the far right and the connecting element between the attached garage and the main house. We intend to have a four inch brick veneer on the foundations on the Prospect Street, Maplewood Avenue side. And as you view the project looking back to the west from Maplewood Avenue, um, everything else we think is fairly low profile or not visible from the street. So we intend to go back to a concrete finish in those locations, asphalt shingles for the roof. And we're showing a center brick chimney. That's a, uh, a faux chimney. And we intend to do um, a thin brick veneer for that. And the bricks will all be a, a more an old port. We go to elevation two, we'll see the view from Maplewood Avenue. And here you see the sloping uh, from the from the right to the left as we come down through. So you see a daylight basement that we've got uh, for a part, portion of the building here. Uh, I did neglect to mention that we are planning on using a granite stoop and granite steps at the front entrance. Um, that's noted here, so that's what reminds me of that. And, uh, and metal railings around that entrance way there. Previous, uh, pre previous designs had a large uh, gable on the back section that we see here with the hip roof, a large gable there. Uh, I think one or two work sessions ago, we changed that to a hip roof and, and reduced the profile there. In this elevation, we see um, two locations for mechanical equipment um, next to the main house and at the back side of the garage. The white lines that I've got around those indicate that those will be screened, but they didn't show the screening in, in this elevation. The screening material is shown on, on sheet 11, uh, 12 when we get there. If we can move to the next one, Nick. And then this is the view from North School Street. We've stepped down the third bay of the garage to be a one-story element. We've uh, reduced it in footprint so that it looks like it's a smaller add-on section to uh, what may have been a carriage house in a previous iteration. The, uh, the rock retaining wall to the far right on this is a, uh, is a patio that we've got intended um, <coughs> that side of the building there. And as we move on, we'll see some 3D renderings. This is from the view from um, Prospect Street and Maplewood Avenue corner. Again, this shows the, um, the uh, hooded roof over the, over the main entrance. And we can move on, I think. The view from North School Street and Prospect Street showing the step down of that third bay of the garage. And we can move again. This is the view, the left-hand side is the North School Street elevation from approximately our, our property line. And the right-hand elevation is the Maplewood Avenue view from approximately our, people, our, our property line adjacent with the old Franklin School. These are the two entrance elements. The one on the right is the one that we prefer. Uh, we've got some questions as to how that roof will be classified from a zoning standpoint and whether or not that puts us into jeopardy for the front yard setback, um, which again, that, that is our preference. Uh, if that doesn't work from a zoning standpoint, we would probably build the second uh, more simple entablature around. <coughs> Changes we've made to that simple entablature that we'd seen in the last time was that we've beefed up the uh, <coughs> The, the top element, the top of the entablature with a larger crown mold, we've added some bed mold in through there and increased the height of the frieze across the top. I don't think you're gonna have an issue with the zoning with that projection. That's great. Thank you. These are some of the uh, exterior elements, the section, typical section through the wall of the house showing the brick veneer at the, at the foundation, wood clabbers running up through PVC water table and trim. Uh, we did add a bed mold here also at the top of the freeze where the freeze meets the soffit. The, uh, the top window detail in the center shows a crosshead detail 
a little bit more detailed on the house that we plan on using, um, whereas at the garage, we're just going to use um, simple flat stock casing <coughs> around. The um, roof trim detail, we revised the return on, um, on the gutter on the left-hand side of that detail. We th uh, originally, that was truncated off, and it looked like it was, uh, it looked truncated. So we've extended that return a little bit and then returned the, uh, the gutter profile around back to the house. And again, this shows the added bed mold um, at the top of the freeze. These are the, basically the general floor plans. Maplewood Avenue is to the top of the sheet. Prospect is to the left of the sheet. And North School Street is to the bottom of the sheet. The right-hand side is the first floor plan. Left-hand side being the second floor plan. The next sheet is the site plan, so that shows it, again, in that orientation. Um, we are taking advantage of existing building setback exemptions to be able to move the building closer to Prospect Street, as we had talked about in the... Uh, in the work sessions and um, also we take advantage of that on North School Street slightly to be able to slide the garage back off of that property so we have a primary building and a secondary building. These are the details of some of the finishes that we've got planned. Um, the barn lights, the metal railings at the front entrance, the asphalt roof shingles, the front door which is a uh, fiberglass door in a wood tone, the painted doors at the, at the um, patio and at the connecting link. The garage door, we intend to have a, uh, a metal insulated door with a um, composite wood veneer over the front of that. We are proposing a PVC fence for the HVAC equipment. Um, we are proposing a, a, a detailed bracket on the lower right hand side is a similar bracket design that we're looking at doing. We probably had that custom made uh, locally in Dover. And then we're showing the mutton designs for the Anderson 400 windows that we're planning, three quarter inch muttons, full divided lights with the spacers in between the windows. And I think that completes it. Thank you. Are there any questions? Comments? Karen. Thank you for the chair. I, nope. I have a comment if you hear me out there. <laughs> yes, John, I'm going to have Karen beat you to it. So we'll have Karen speak and then we'll go right to you. That's Thank you fine. for the chimney. Welcome. Um, what is the, the steps, the material for the front steps? Granite. Granite. Granite okay. stoop and steps. Yep. Right. And then there'll be a granite step actually leading up to a, um, a wood deck at the, at the breezeway entrance. Excellent. John? Thank you. Um, so I have some comments. I just want to say that um, I appreciate uh, Mr. Keenan what you have done with the with the gutters, in particular, uh, wrapping around the return, mitering those gutters. Um, they look very much like a crown molding. Uh, that's that's really uh, a fine detail. I, I don't think there's really anybody out there in the carpentry world anymore that can mitre uh, a crown molding on the rake into anything. So um, I can see why you did that. I, I appreciate your brick veneers and I appreciate your hip roof over the front door. Uh, I would prefer that. And uh, in general, at this point, uh, I'm saying that um, I think our work sessions have been productive and I uh, am fully of approval in what I'm looking at right now. Thank you. Thank you, John. Any other comments or questions? Martin. Uh, picking up on what uh, Karen had asked about the stoop, you said it's going to be granite steps up to a wood. Yeah. Right, right now, part of my problem is that the stoop looks like a concrete block, and I'm not sure how you're detailing. Is, is the landing one big granite slab? No, I don't believe it will be. I, I believe it'll probably be granite walls and then a granite slab across the top. Okay. So it wouldn't be it wouldn't be one three foot by uh -huh. six foot by thirty inch deep piece of okay. granite. Okay, I'm, yeah. I'm just you, you have such a beautiful entrance, and yeah. I just want to I, I just hope that you know you detail that properly along with the railing because I don't see any railing uh, product presented. There's, there's a photo of a similar uh, railing on sheet, 11, uh, sheet 12. 
and I hope I didn't mis misspeak, the, the front entrance is, is all granite. The granite leading up to a wood deck is the, um, the breezeway connector between the garage and the house. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah, I, don't, I still don't see it. I'm it's the far left on sheet 12. It looks like, it looks like the deck. You have to zoom in. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Under the light. Okay. All right. Um, and just one other thing. You're going to paint the gutter. You're, you're going to paint the downspout as it transitions from the trim past the foundation. That's what I'm proposing. Yeah. Okay. I did, Was that some, I, I've never seen that. It wasn't something that was brought up other than the graphically we were showing it looked like corner boards running down. But again, I was just trying to show the locations of the downspouts. Okay. I just, so. to me, uh, I've never seen it. So to me, it would look odd, but I'll leave it at that. We're happy to not do it if it's your pref if it's the commission's preference not to do it. I wouldn't see why you would do it. Is, so, is Mark, there any? Yeah. Martin, could I just clarify what you're saying? So you're, you're questioning the part from that just goes down the brick where they said they would paint it brick color. You're not questioning the part above. What they're going to do is you're going to paint it white as, as the background trim is white. And then when it goes to the foundation, you're going to paint it red. At the bottom of the water table to the yeah, ground. I, I, it's, it's not a make or break. I just wouldn't do it. I've just never seen it. And I think it would look odd and, you know, You've done everything we've asked you to done. It's a wonderful project, and, and you have my full support. Yep. Anybody else? Dave? Uh, can I, I'll just yep. chime in and maybe um, ease Martin's concerns that my house was painted that way, um, but not uh, by any particular design. That's just the way the painters did it. And I have lots of trim with different colors, and they painted the don't spell it's all different colors, but it seems to work. It fits in. Um, and so I'm not concerned about it at all. Okay. You'll have to send me a picture. <laughs> yes, Rich. Um, yes, I'd like to also ease Martin's concerns. I actually paint um, exterior in the historic district, and all the houses I've painted, we do that once we get to the wee batch. Um, if there's any sort of vent or any sort of, um, you know, downspout we would patch, match um, where it would change color. Okay. No objections. Dave Adams, any? Uh, I want to thank you very much for the effort that you put into this thing. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I hope we were helpful. Um, you certainly behaved like you were listening and, and viewed what we were doing as uh, the thing you needed to do. Uh, everything as far as balance, uh, the, the fenestration and the massing that you, you've taken such care with. I'm, I'm really, really very pleased. Um, I also, like Martin, uh, don't have a make or break. My comment about the, that white thing on the corner was was, graphic, was, yeah. was just what it was. I, I, and once you said it what it was, I'm good. Yes, uh, in the day, back in the day, painting highly painted Victorian buildings, we used to section the paint job right across the downspouts and elements as it lined up with different elements on the building. This, on the other hand, is not a highly decorated building where a line that is otherwise perfectly understandable, a white downspout, would interfere with the design of the building. So I, I, I personally don't feel like it's, it's a big deal here. But, but in, indeed, it's a thing that does happen on highly painted houses. Painters, painters have their own view of the world and, okay. and, and see these things as being a requirement. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm very pleased with this. I, I, the only thing that I can say, and this probably is an inappropriate thing to say, but, but I, I, in reviewing the neighborhood a couple of times, I've always thought of this as a neighborhood of transition. But I kind of... I kind of think I'm, I missed the point. I, I believe that there's a transition, but I believe it's just a teeny bit further from town than this building. And I guess in hindsight, I sort of wished we'd tried to steer you a little bit more into the federal period than with this transitional late uh, uh, Greek revival. But it's a beautiful damn thing. You've done a wonderful job. I'm clearly gonna vote for this happily. Thank you for your comments and thank you for your help during the work sessions. They were very helpful, thanks. Any other questions or comments? Okay. My only um, 
stipulation, if I can make one at this point, is that I don't think there's enough information on the railing, the wrought iron railing. We don't have any information on how it's finished and, you know, does it have curves or whatever. So if you could bring that back with a little more detail when that's ready. Um, and lastly, for the investment that you're making in this house, I really think you should consider a solid wood door. You're right close to Prospect Street. It's your main welcome to the world. You're in the heart of a very wooden historic district. Um, I think on that one front door, if we put some consideration to a authentic solid wood door, that would really crown the rest of the project. We have considered that seriously. Um, our concern is that because there is no full porch roof over that, and we are so close to the street, that that's fairly well exposed to the elements. So we want something that's going to be durable and, and look good for for an extended period of time without a lot of maintenance, if possible. Our preference is for the fiberglass door. Choose solid English oak. You'll do well. Okay, I'm going to open this to the public. If anyone would like to comment on this project, anybody on? Zoom. Working on it. Okay. I'll just chime in and say I agree with Margo's comment about the door um, material. Uh, Actually, I do have a quick question as, as we're looking at this image. Uh, what is the material of the, the side lights and transom? That would be the fiberglass also to match the door. I think, um, as Margo pointed out, it, it, it's, we're right up on the street. It's very visible. Um, I would love to see all of that beautiful work being done in wood. Thank you, Reagan. Nobody has their hand up that's in the waiting room. If somebody would like to speak to to this application, please raise your hand, and then I can let you into the meeting. No, nope. I'm not seeing any. Okay, we will close the public hearing, and I await a motion. Well, if I could, uh, I would move that we approve this application as presented. Thank you, John. With the paint of the downspouts being um, up to the owner. So that, that's a stipulation, John, that they would have the option to paint the paint or not paint the uh, downspouts. Well, one or what? Uh, between, between you and I and everybody else that's listening, we're not supposed to have any purview over painting. Um, what color? I mean, he could paint it purple. I don't know. So I, I don't even think the discussion is, is worth um, including. So I'll just uh, say um, approve it as presented. Okay. John, with or without stipulation on the railings coming back with more detail? For admin approval. Admin approval. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes, that should be included. Thank you. So one stipulation, that the, the railing system for the front door come back for administrative approval. I'll second that Correct. motion. Thank you, Dave. Any further discussion? John, could we have findings of fact, please? Um, I'm afraid someone else is going to have to give some findings of facts. I'm very sorry. You were seconding. At the bottom of that page are the findings of fact. Bottom of that page. Yeah, bottom of that page. All right, and maintaining this, the, I feel that this building's design maintains the special character of the district and complements and enhances the architectural value of the neighborhood. Thank you. Roll call vote Thank then. You. Reagan? Thank you. Thanks, yes. John? Uh, yes. Martin? Approved. Dan? Yes. Karen? Yes. Dave? Aye. Rich? Yes. Chair votes aye. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you all for your time. Good evening. Okay. For all your time. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay, next item on the agenda is a petition of the National Society of Colonial Dames, owner for a property located at Zero Market Street, the Ore House, wherein permission is requested to allow the replacement of rooftop mechanical equipment, restaurant kitchen vents, and renovation to an existing structure, replace the existing roof 
rubber roof membrane. <coughs> As for plans on file in the planning department, said property is shown on assessor map 118 as lot five and lies within the character district four, downtown overlay, civic and historic districts. Who's here to present? Good evening, Carla Goodnight from CJ Architects. Um, and I also have David Calkins here with me, the contractor. Uh, what we would like to uh, accomplish here is to replace the outdated kitchen equipment uh, currently on the roof of the Orr House uh, restaurant and uh, with more state-of-the-art um, equipment. And uh, if you would look, uh, this would also involve replacing the rubber roof membrane and the um, ceiling construct, the, the roof construction is, uh, is undersized. Uh, in general for code requirements, so that will need to be uh, replaced as well. Um, if you look at uh, 2.0, you can see that their current roof equipment will be removed uh, and two pieces of it will be removed and roughly two pieces will be replaced. So um, if uh, they were both of the same age, it would almost be replacing one with another. Uh, 3.0 shows the, uh, a different viewpoint, a vantage point of the two coming off. <clears throat> and we will also be removing a uh, vent from the side, so we'll actually be improving on that elevation. And then the uh, equipment proposed, the two pieces of equipment proposed are uh, dimensioned and clarified on 4.0. So uh, if you have, it, it's kind of a short presentation uh, of equipment being removed and equipment being replaced, uh, the, the two pieces in question. If anybody has any questions, uh, I'd be happy to do my best to, or have David answer for you. John or Reagan, did you have any questions? Um, I guess my only question is about screening mm -hmm. um, to see if this would be, I, I, I remember reading in there that the, the fence is not to be touched, but um, I'm not sure that that fence is adequate to really screen it, especially from this view. So I don't know if there was any plan, um, since we're trying to be consistent about asking <laughs> all mechanicals to be screened, mm -hmm. um, to to provide any screening. Well, <clears throat> I would also like to say, um, I mean, just from looking at the last picture he's presented, I'm not sure what the number is, but the fence appears to be hanging outward in the middle. It appears to be bowing mm -hmm. towards the sidewalk. Um, obviously, it's going to need some work. Uh, if the roof is going to come off, that fence is going to come off because they have to guarantee that roof is not going to leak. And as Carla said, it's going to have um, structural work done to it also. So um, I would just be concerned that the fence be high enough so that people walking down the sidewalk would not uh, be seeing these units. Um, I think we have to be careful on screening the units themselves because that would be awkward to have some screening right in the middle of the roof and i believe also we have a letter um, from the colonial dames um, not wanting anything above 45 inches or something like that i think um, so that's my comment on the fence well you're yes you're correct um in referring to the cover letter by uh dtc lawyers um which does specifically stipulate that uh, there is no authorization to proceed with any uh, replacing, renovating, or otherwise improving the existing fence along Market Street on the property. Uh, this um, was a stipulation of the owner and discussing with the tenant. Uh, the fence is mounted on a little bit of a curb, so they'll be able to do the rubber roof um, and uh, the structural repairs I believe without uh, without impacting um, that fencing area. So 
um, I believe that's you know what they had decided the owner and tenant in their collaboration and it's memorialized by the uh, attorney so Martin leave why doesn't your client want this to be screened and fenced appropriately I actually do not know um, because the uh, client, uh, the um, owner of the building and the tenant of the ore house are really um, conveying these wishes uh, via the uh, legal counsel. So we are only apprised of, of those of the decisions they reach by by the legal legal teams. So is there anyone that could speak? Uh, on behalf of the clients and answer my question. <laughs> I'm not sure, present. maybe someone from the public. I, I, I'm not sure if there's any, uh, there's no one in our group right now that can really speak to the, um, the, uh, the, the, the uh, creation of these terms, I guess. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, I don't get that because mm. Mm -hmm. Right now, this is an eyesore. Mm -hmm. uh, it's across from one of the most uh, prized ex historic pieces of architecture in our city. Mm -hmm. um, we typically ask for mechanical equipment to be screened. Mm -hmm. And why that stipulation would be presented is, is mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I, I don't um, know. I would only be guessing. You know, if I, you know, I could I don't want guess. to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, I could. Yeah. I suggest there. if there are any further questions of Carla with regard to the project, and then um, we could address any other questions in the public that might be able to answer. Mm -hmm. Karen, did you want to? Yeah, um, I, it's great that you're going from uh, three vents to two, uh, but I am curious, are the locations of the two uh, that will be coming back Mm -hmm. in the same location uh, if you look at page um, two. right here 2.0 I believe Those are out. these are in I don't have it oh it's on the screen uh, 2.0 two. you can see that's where they the X's are and then the other two oh, are okay okay right uh, mm -hmm. yep okay I see that um, and then the um, the approximate size of the new vents coming in compared to the the two that are going out, are they similar in size? Very similar. Okay. They're very similar. They're just different shapes. Okay. Well, they're not exactly. Okay. Uh, John or Regan, any other questions for Carla? No, no. They're, um, they're on a curb. And for those that don't know it, a curb is uh, actually a structural element usually made out of two by tens or twelves or something that gives a level base for the fans to be mounted on so it elevates them off the roof that that's true and on 4.0 this this diagram is is including the curb um, yeah. on uh, that 16 inches is the curb on EF1 and um, it's not dimensioned on B, but it's less than that. It's just shown. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but that's that below the below the 1.75 flange um, is the would be the curb for that unit. Um, so uh, there again, um, going with what Martin was saying, I, I, I'm not going to be outraged at why. I'm not wondering why. I don't want to cause any trouble with the Dames um, mm -hmm. defense. <laughs> needs to be replaced mm -hmm. and i'm not sure how much structural ideas that you have an experience but that fence is going to have to be taken off anyway even if it's set to one side and put back on so it looks exactly like it is now mm -hmm. but even when it's mounted on a curb you don't know what the structural work's going to be the timbers might be bigger um, two by tens or twelves or whatever and you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. that um, the size of the structural roof rafter so to speak will be probably larger and mm -hmm. somehow or another they're going to interfere with that curb 
Mm -hmm. It's not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. That's my comments. Thank you. Thank you, okay. John. Um, I, yes. Could I ask that if um, in our approval of this, could we stipulate that we, or at least express that we would like the fence replaced, if not in kind, then in a, you know, an, an appropriate uh, design that could become that could come back to us because um, because we would like this properly screened. Thank you, Reagan. Um, <clears throat> so I'm I'm going to take my comments a little further and say that the screening should be on two sides. Mm -hmm. We have been very explicit in the past year, year and a half, that all mechanicals be screened in a way that the neighbors, the public are not seeing these. And we're talking about mechanicals, small HVAC and condensers in private homes, you know, screened on three sides. Um, this is very prominent. It's very public, mm -hmm. it's very large. Um, and I think that we would be not following our own guidelines if we didn't require that this be screened mm -hmm. on two sides, the side of Market Street and the side uh, where the walkway goes down because people are going to be walking right past those units as they do today. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's uh, personally, I, th I think that it's a non-starter if we don't see at least two sides worth of screening. So unless there are any other questions or Carla, do you have anything Chairman, further? Yes, Dave. Please. Um, a couple of questions for the applicant, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, you say you're removing the vent on the side mm -hmm. that's set chaotically in the brickwork. What are you going to do about the brickwork? The brickwork will be replaced with water struck and um, a very similar mortar mix to what we're already using on 205. And core in? Yes. Um, you have a collection of other appliances in the far corner, what mm -hmm. I call the right-hand rear corner as you stand on the Market Street. Um, so what happens to that stuff? You, the ones on the surface of the roof? Yes. The ones on the surface of the roof are depicted also on 2.0, I believe, um, as in a light, uh, light color off to the left. So everything that's there stays other than those pieces we've called out. Okay, um, you say you're going to change the restructure of the roof. Is that they'll, going to make yes, it out of be, larger pieces of wood? Yes, they'll have to be reinstalled, yeah. So that means that the pieces of wood will grow larger? Probably down into the ceiling, I believe. Down. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the curbs that you show in your drawings, mm -hmm are one of them has a dimension of 16 inch on it yes the curbs that exist now i think are yep. shy of that by some bit right i'd say more like like a foot shy of that mm -hmm. um, i'm assuming the units are about the same size and so that would suggest that the units once done on the new roof mm -hmm. which is going to be enlarged down but not up but the units themselves are going to be setting another foot taller and and uh, that, they're, and they're, so they're going to be sitting a foot taller. I think they're going to have more of a impact on the street than than what we've got now. Um, I believe if you look at 3.0, um, the you can see the larger of the units. And again, it's influenced by the slope as well. Like this, as it slopes down away from the fencing, um, it becomes lower. Uh, but if you look at where they are now, um, it is roughly, the new units would be roughly at the height of the fence. I could, you know, uh, get that actual dimension. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Okay. Yes, Martin. Um, maybe at this point, I, I can't support this, support this application as it's being presented mm -hmm. because it's, it's not addressing the main concerns of, of screening, mm -hmm. maybe maybe uh, we continue with this. Uh, I, that's just that's just my thought. Well, that that would be uh, that would be fine, and then we can certainly pass your comments on to DTC, which they will now have seen uh, your thoughts on that as you know being a, a you know something that is an, a non-negotiable piece. 
So, um, uh, you know, perhaps uh, the uh, legal counsels of the parties involved can see what your opinion is and we can move forward if Possibly. we continue. Is that, can I, yeah. Does that sound can about I, right now? Obviously you can do that. I, I just want to ask, can I ask a question? Mm. I just have a question for the applicant, which mm -hmm. is obviously either the owner or the, the, the person running the restaurant that's mm -hmm. presumably directly impacted by any continuance. If it was super time sensitive, which things usually are anyway, mm -hmm. and these folks up here agree to it, you, you probably could get back even next week if we had within 48 hours a solution to the screening, which is a possibility. I mean, I think we could fit it on next week's agenda if, if the applicant and the team out there, whoever you guys are, mm -hmm. can come to an agreement on the screening and submit something mm -hmm. by Friday. We can get it out to these folks and get it mm -hmm. on the website and have a meeting next week. If you need more time because there's too many moving parts, then we'll see you next month. And I guess somebody else brought up the option that we could be at a stipulation that requires us to come back with a screening alternative. Is that not an acceptable <laughs> framework they, they as well. They normally go together. I, 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 I'm not going to speak for these folks, but that, I'm that just seems throwing it harder out there. than looking at it all at once. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't think it would be wise to separate these things because... Because mm -hmm. the applicants it, already dug their heels in over the issue. Well, also, once you start doing the work, if you, you can't undo it, if sure. the screening mm -hmm. is not agreed upon, you're, sure. you're mm -hmm. up a creek. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to suggest is, Carla, unless there's anything else you'd like to say, we'll open this up to the public. Okay. And uh, see what we get there. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Does anybody from the public wish to speak with regard to this application? And raise your hand if you're online. Go ahead, sir. You could introduce yourself, please. Yes. My name is Chris Hawkins. I'm the guy who wrote the letter from DTC Lawyers. And uh, we support the application as presented tonight. Uh, I just want to suggest that the issue of the fence, we've taken, we take your comments on board, we hear you. It is of um, extreme importance to the dames to maintain the view from the Moffat Lighthouse to the water. They consider that part of their historic mission. So yeah. that is why this issue is, is of sensitivity to the dames. That being said, we hear you and I'll be speaking with the applicant's attorney further about this and other issues. Uh, time is a little bit tough because the Dames is an organization. It's not one person who makes decisions, but we will certainly give this reasonable attention and we take all your comments on board. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Any other? Uh, Margo? Yes, John. Uh -huh. um, so your idea of <clears throat> running the fence and or a railing or down the the side uh, of the building. I think that's very important too. Um, we could, um, you know, make a continuation and uh, request that the fence not be any higher in the front because I think that's what I just heard from the lawyer. And um, my idea would be to have more of a balustrade type fence or a picket fence per se, maybe a little bit closer together than normal um, along that side, um, as you uh, asked for. Um, but uh, I think we do need a continuation. Okay. And I think I it think should be. Sorry, I was just gonna say, I think that's a good suggestion, John. Yeah. Okay. So, um... It sounds as if we're going to continue this. The only question is whether we're going to continue it to next week or next month. March 2nd. If we continue it to March 2nd and they get the get something in advance, is that that works? Yeah. No. I mean, it didn't sound to me like the applicant was going to be able to uh, herd all the cats in 48 hours and get something back here. It, that a month is more realistic. I mean. I, Correct. Or someone should come back to the mic and restate what they're realistically going to achieve. Members of the public? Yeah, he's the applicant, actually. Uh, uh, Co-applicant. Ray Garanona of the Orr House. Yes. And I'll try to 
gather the cats together in 48 hours. Okay. Okay. So we continue it for a week if they would like to do that. And if you're not ready Friday, it'll get continued uh, next week to March 2nd. Second. Our, right. our goal would be to, to get it together in the next 48 hours and possibly do a, a, um, a fence in, uh, in like kind, possibly done in mahogany, but to replace the same that's straight if we can come to terms with the landlord. Okay. Yeah, it's actually Thank 36 you. hours. <laughs> That's okay. okay. Whoa. Thank you. So could I have a motion, please, to continue this? So moved. Second. Thank you. And a roll call vote. John? Uh, yes. Reagan? Yes. Karen? Yes. Dave? Aye. Rich? Yes. Martin? Yes. Dan? Yes. Chair votes aye. Thank you very much. Okay, public hearings, old business. This is a petition of 64 Vaughn Mall LLC owner for a property located at 64 Vaughn Street wherein permission is requested to allow modifications to a previously approved plan, revisions to the storefront design, as per plans on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on assessor map 126 as lot one and lies within the character district five, downtown overlay, and historic districts. Who is here to present? Good evening, I'm uh, Steve Wilson. I work for Hampshire Development. I'm also, just to clarify briefly, uh, former owner of the property, and I, I guess you've all heard that um, Novo Cure, uh, international biomed uh, development <clears throat> company has purchased the uh, building from us and is continuing with the construction of it using <coughs> Hampshire Development, my company, as the contractor. So I'm here representing the owner with, uh, as we will throughout the construction period with any minor or major changes that we need to make to the, to the building in order to not let them pile up to the end, okay? Thank you. So tonight, um, as you'll see from the illustration on the uh, board, you have the approved plan on the upper panel, which shows on the front, first of all, just to get a little housekeeping, additional housekeeping out of the way, but at the, at the final meeting where we had got our approval, we agreed to reuse the front door that has existed from the Margeson days, the origins of the building, and replicate it to provide two leafs of the same historically occurring door. So the plan had not been modified, obviously, at that, but we had agreed to do that. So if you look down at the new elevation, you'll see that there's two 42-inch doors that the one on the right is the historically occurring door and the one on the left will be the reproduction, and um, that it enlarges the door by a foot, the door space, and so it steepens the tapered side lights, which in the elevation looks a little bit funny but in application, it's actually correct. It's cl actually closer to the s slope of the original uh, doorway. So just to make that clear, we made that change, and that was how it was to be approved, unless you have any further input. Um, secondarily, when we were resizing and sizing the storefronts, we uh, sized the panels in the approved drawing. At, in the largest panel, the lower square section is 8 foot 6 wide, and with the height of that area, um, it exceeded the manufacturer's ability to provide that window in one panel, which isn't to say we couldn't get it from like Conair or a custom aluminum manufacturer, but in order to keep it consistent with the Anderson manufacturer of the other windows in the building, we're asking you to approve the lower drawing, which has those panels being seven feet wide and um, when you look at it, because I want you to understand uh, the plan um, as it's presented, but also it looks like the skirt of those is a little bit taller, but it's really in the illustration. There's a six-inch curb, landscape curb in front of those, so they'll still be thin like the top one. It's just sort of in the translation of the drawing. So that's what we're here uh, looking that change to make that change, and really it's to keep the... Uh, manufacturer and the um, muttons and the 
you know, uh, complexion of the window frames and and parts to be the same. Are there any questions for the applicant? John or Reagan? Okay. I don't have any questions, but I <laughs> but comment. Well, I just state out there clearly that I, I can't support um, this. I didn't support the change of the, uh, the storefront before last time. And then this just further changes the feel and the design of the historic original storefront so much. Um, I understand the, I understand the, the physical challenges to it, but um, I, I can't continue to support it. Okay, what, what I would like to say, um, I would like to say to, uh, in comment to Reagan's uh, uh, comment that um, the approval has, is, has been given to the top illustration. And so I can't understand why you wouldn't give your approval to the bottom uh, when you're actually cutting up those large pieces of glass into still large pieces, but um, four on each side. Um, I, I feel that it looks much better, more evenly balanced, and uh, I'm fully in favor of this. That's fine, John. I've given my reason why I can't. I, I, it changes the design too much, so. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, then I'll open this to the public. Anyone wishing to speak to this request, application? Anybody online? Raise your hand if you'd like to speak. I see none. <clears throat> okay, we'll close the public hearing and I wait a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> motion to approve as presented. Second. I'll second that motion. Okay, any further discussion? I will just note that I um, also had Reagan's concerns with regard to this storefront, but I think I take John's point of view that um, that's gone past. So I'll be voting based on what I also feel is a slight improvement in what I didn't like before. <laughs> All right. Finding of facts are yes, that it, uh, it maintains the special character of the district and is consistent with the special and defining character of surrounding properties. Thank you. Roll call vote. We will start with Karen this time. Approve. Dave? Aye. Rich? Aye. Martin? Approved. Dan? Yes. Reagan? No. John? Yes. Chair votes yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry I couldn't turn you back, Reagan, but. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Okay, so we already postponed item A under work sessions old business. That brings us to item B. Work session requested by Port Harbor Land LLC owner for property located at 2 Russell Street and 0 Deer Street, two lots. We're in permission is requested to allow the construction of a new freestanding structure, <clears throat> three to five story mixed use buildings. As for plans on file in the planning department, said properties are shown on assessor map 124 as lot 12, map 118 as lot 28, and map 125 as lot 21, and lie within the character district five, downtown overlay, and historic districts. We will be moving down to the table for the work session.
so before we get started, I'm going to encourage everybody to be sure they're speaking into the mics uh, so that everybody can hear us. And is everybody sitting down? Why don't you introduce your team again and we'll get started. Sure. Um, I'm Brooke Slocum with SGA, and to my right is Walker Shanklin, who's a design architect, a senior designer in the firm, and Ryan Parm, two international. Welcome. What do you have for us tonight? So tonight we're going to kind of take the next step down our road of sketchy drawings and keep them a little sketchy, and hopefully we can see if there's likes and dislikes in regards to the concepts that we're playing with. But we wanted to first step back into, I'm going to see where the screen is going, but we're going to try and step to where, oh, thanks Ryan. Um, we all know the concept, the massing diagrams, obviously we, the, the, the point where we wanted to break them into pieces and create more. What sheet do you want? And sorry I'll, about that. Tell me next. What you want. Six. Six. So this one. This one here. So this is that scenario. Again, we're just continuing down. We, we understand where there's a lot of public space, but we're also trying to break this large group of masses into much smaller pieces. As part of the conversation, I think, with you all, we wanted to make sure on page seven that we understood what the town, how the town is made up of parts. You know, we, we have all, we all discussed the base, the middle, and the top, and how that's broken out. So we took a look at one of your more iconic corners, whether it's, we could do it on almost any street you have, but understand that there's a variety in base height. There's a middle of the building that has sometimes three, sometimes four, sometimes, you know, two build, two windows or, or, or levels. And then there's a top that varies. Um, and we tried to take one that had the most extreme piece on it. But it does help drive the character of your town. And yet each building that's next to each other has its own character along that path. So this is where we're thinking and we want to continue to develop that. And as you can see, we're going on to the next page, which is eight, which is kind of taking each one of these little snippets of the neighborhood and we're, 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 we're trying to make them all break, break down the scale but have a relationship to each other. So as we move through these different parts of the block, we're looking at a base, a middle, and a top, but we don't want the top to be the same. We can potentially shift where the base alignments, but we still want to keep that character going across. And, and then also recognize that on the two ends of this building, you're in a much more dynamic area. And in the middle, we want to try and be a little bit more residential or more tied to the historic portion of the, the downtown as we move through it. So but that's kind of where we were going with these facades. They're fairly early on in our development, but it's a, a rhythm and a path that kind of makes sense so far. But we love to hear your feedback and make sure we're going down the right path. So now I'm on page 10. Um, that's helpful. Um, any questions so far in regards to how we're starting to think about breaking down the facades? Go ahead. 10. This, the pretty one. Yes. Okay. The colorful ones. Yeah. So in that scenario, we're starting now to take a look at what materials and feel and texture might be like and what those, I think we've, we've talked a little bit about the passageways, how they're interconnecting between the parts of the, the old city and, the, and Ports, Portsmouth, Port, Port, Port Walk Place, <laughs> thank you. But, but what it's like to go north here um, and try and make sure that this building encourages and helps that, that flow, but also making sure that when you look down the street, it doesn't change the dynamic of how you've been moving through the rest of these, these uh, towns. So again, these are very sketchy in a, in a sense where we're going to start refining using some more tools. But you know, we do want to make sure that the building to the, to, on Maplewood has a strong GER feel. It's a commercial building. We want to make sure that it holds the corner. It sits right on the train track, so it has a lot of clinking. And so that part of the building that we're going to we'll take a look at a little bit deeper, has a, has a slightly bit of a, a jog to it, but it also helps create the corner on Maplewood and Deer. And then on the more iconic end, which I think we all talked about last week, is the, the very unique residential building. Could become a very cool building that reaches out towards the harbor with the train tracks and the bridges and all the kind of industrial element. And those two become your anchor of the site, and it dissolves into more classical historical architecture interpretations in towards the middle. That's our concept. And then, um, you know, we'll, we can take a look when we start going down there, we'll just kind of look at page 11 is more where park 
court block places and it's kind of the more the four-story office building overlapping with the residential building and and we have a, a slope but because of you know working with you all we're, we no longer have that plateau that everything sits on the, the street just kind of finds its way down to the train tracks there's a slightly less re uh, uh, retail edge there because the building has to sit up high to have its thing. So it's going to be more of an edge of the building. But with that walk, we try and make it a little bit more residential. And then the office building will have more opportunity to flow out. But it is one of those places where it's more of a passage instead of a retail element. Although there could be, there will be retail in it. You just won't be walking into the retail from that corner. Um, because the, the intent is, when you get to page 12, that's really the grade that we want to hold this building at. It kind of makes sense. Um, it's where the main entrance to the condo building is. The retail would be entered at that level. And, and then the streets kind of slope away from that point. Um, it is interesting in plan, though, that this uh, uh, elevation is where the entry to the, re the residential is going to be. But it feels like it's part of this continuing facade of different buildings. And then obviously we also have the parking um, on page 12, which is, again, the, is that 13? Yeah. yeah, my eyes are going. But th th that's a, another element, just a pathway. You can walk through there. You can, th we'll have a stair that goes down. But you, you know, it's all of the drive areas that we're working on and it'll, we'll look at it on the backside. We're also trying to make that a much more pedestrian friendly roadway. Even though you're gonna be drunk, cars are being going to the parking garages, it's going to be feel more like you could walk on it. Cars would just have to be a lot more. It's a pedestrian friendly driveway, um, ideally. And then you know we're we're we, we thinking about the iconic end, where there could be some more connections to the park across Green Street. Um, again, I'm, I'm on 14, and more in keeping with how that feels with the train tracks and some of that more industrial element towards the water that we were talking about. Um, you know, there's a there's a lot of buildings we're doing down uh, in on the Boston Harbor where we're expressing some old steel building looks. They're modern, we're, which is what this would be, but it would feel like it's part of an older type of building, even though it's in a modern uh, approach by expressing some of that structure with the way we're cladding the building. Um, again, and that's something we'd love to hear whether you guys think we're on the right path on that. And conversely, when you hop over to um, page 16, we're trying to do the same thing along Maplewood and the train tracks, which is have that similar vocabulary be kind of an anchor. We still have some crafting to do with that piece, but that would be more of an anchor that would tie the other piece together. But as it stands out, um, it, would be, it would be this kind of corner of more of an of a office building of the past to some degree. And this helps to step the step the massing down as well at that corner. You exactly. Have kind of terrace that starts to break the break the scale down. Exactly. <clears throat> and then the next sheet on 17 is is uh, kind of what that garage screen would be, and it's really covering up two stories of garage. But in reality, we just try and make it. And if we can do it right, we'll get planting on it and be kind of a green wall that has parking behind it. Um, and on top of that becomes the the private plaza for the condo. So you can kind of see it be, it'd be full of greenery kind of flowing down to the train tracks. If potentially we did it. provide additional articulation for those openings to make it feel like it's part of the fabric of the buildings above. Exactly. And then the page 16 or 18, 18 is a little, little bit skewed, but it really is trying to figure out what does that um, end piece feel like if it does come around and become, you know, a tie to the tracks, but also a banding for the building um, and you know, we you know we keep going it, it, um, Maplewood and Deer on page 20 is more how would that one piece overlaps and connects and creates a kind of an entry on Deer Street and 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 Maplewood but also allows the building to wrap back and then the neighborhood continues to walk down Deer Street or walk up Deer Street and the same goes for uh, 21 where we're basically trying to show that other edge of the, the, the residential building kind of finding its way up into the more uh, neighborhoody buildings as we reach the top of Deer and, and Russell. Um, and then kind of, I think 22 is the iconic shot, you, you, you know, a small scale, but your flat iron to some degree, it's a pure half oval um, that then starts trying to figure out how to take this geometry of the site and, and make it work. 
this is such a wild little piece of real estate. I mean, it's going to be a unique, and, and ideally, you know, the ground floor would be like a restaurant that can oversee, and then the, the residential pieces above. Um, I'm not saying that it is a restaurant. Don't get me wrong, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we have some precedent. Again, we think we've looked at these last time. I don't think we changed too much in here, but these are kind of where we're thinking that, that vocabulary works and, and always keeping in mind what the history of the town is um, in the back of our mind every time. And you know, We're working with uh, Tyne Bond and, and their landscape group to craft those spaces that are public that we think are you know, they can be. Some of them are going to be small. Some of them are going to be open to the to deer and Russell. Some could be that long driveway in the back. You know, really making sure that those pieces feel like they're part of this unique fabric that is, you know, a huge part of uh, Portsmouth. Um, and then, you know, the, the, I'm on 25 now. Uh, just those interacting spaces that are either public or private, they've become very important for how those buildings are going to play off each other. And I think that's kind of it. So that's let me hear quick. your thoughts. <laughs> well, you guys have seen it all. So but what we're trying to do is, is see if we're on the right path. And again, I'd love to hear some more feedback in regards to our thoughts of how we're trying to tighten those two edges and then let the rest of the buildings kind of fall in between. So. Thank you. Well, I'd entertain people's initial thoughts, reactions. Aaron? I like it. Um, I like the direction you're going, and I, um, I think it's, it's great how you have the flat iron section, and then on the Maplewood you you've tied in a lot of the same <clears throat> elements, so it, it matches. We'll uh, get there though. I'm not. I don't think Maplewood's there yet. I've yeah, but I, I don't like going <laughs> with it. The detailing. Yeah. I, I see that you, your your, your direction wanted, is such. Yeah, I appreciate that. that. that yeah, um, it is a very unusual lot. I've I've seen this in so many uh, iterations over the years. This is by far. The best, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that you broke it down into the multiple buildings instead of the one giant building. Mm -hmm. Those throughways in the middle with the three buildings is just a huge benefit. Yeah, if, if we had our way, they'd be dead ends, and you guys wouldn't have it. But mm -hmm. you guys made us do it. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. It's, it's just it, it's, it's actually a much better building yeah, now, so we're very happy. Um, so I have a comment. If you hear me. Yes, John. Oh, okay. Um, I agree with Karen, especially on the so-called flat iron building. Um, I'm really wondering what that building is on, uh, on the context photos uh, E. Um, where is that? Yeah. Is that Boston? E. Yeah, that's downtown. That's Boston. Yeah. That's a recently built hotel. Would it? Boston. The Revere Hotel, I think? Or yeah, that think, sounds right. Yeah. 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 It's not as um, nice as the one that's in Portsmouth. <laughs> no. So, you know, that's my comment on that building. I, I like the way you're going, and I, I like the fact that you can uh, include modern industrial um, iron look to it. Um, we've, we've seen this, um, this same location uh, in many iterations, as Karen said, and it is a, a difficult one. Um, I would also um, like to um, give you some positive feedback on your use of the bays within the columns of the building. Um, this is something reminds me of a building in Chicago that was built in 1890 or something. It was, a, you know, one of the first skyscrapers. I hate to say the word skyscraper because somebody's going to put right. it in the Portsmouth. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, I like that um, feeling and it's different. We haven't seen that with bay window over bay window over bay window. I would only encourage you to not use that two story base all the time on that um, condo building and maybe bring those bays down uh, another, you know, so that you have four stories of bay. That's my opinion on that. Um, I, I just would like you to break up the bases a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And um, the only other comment I have is on the angled portion of the uh, of the condo building. Maybe we should give them an A, B, and C. <laughs> I don't know. But th there's an angle portion on that condo. I don't know if Nick can go to it. Where am I going to find that? Uh, page 19. Yeah. 
Um, so it's it kind of follows the sidewalk going, I mean, uh, follows the cars going in. But um, I think it's because of its central location and where it sits that if there was some way of exaggerating the uh, cornice on that, sure, uh, I'm not sure where you're sitting as far as the height uh, goes. Um, but um, if you could, you know, give that more importance, um, I, I think it would really help the building out. And um, otherwise, that's it for me. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a great point. We we lowered the, um, uh, the uh, just to respond to both. I think the cornicing and all the detailing as we get to the top is something that we're going to want to make sure we're clear on. And we know that there are some opportunities to go beyond the height limit with a cornice or a terrace, or uh, not a terrace but a parapet. So we want to kind of play with that, make sure we're not uh, going over. Um, in regards to the two store base, I think. We did lower it on the two end buildings, but it would we're, 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 we need to craft. I agree with you a better entrance on that front on the second building in which we're considering the entry. That whole thing needs to be kind of more of the centerpiece of that whole center condo building, and the other ones need to be played with a little bit more. But I, I appreciate it, especially if you reference back to the studies that we did previously yeah. showing that kind of main articulated entrance. I think is definitely yep. definitely important to consider. Uh, I, I'm wondering also yet of the um, of the building uh, on faces Market Street. I don't know if we're going to call it the flat iron end or something. But, I mean, the, to me, that end on the roof really cries out for something like a flagpole. <laughs> uh, to me, it would be a very proud flagpole at that location. You let us That's go just up another hundred feet, we'll do it. <laughs> just a comment. Thanks. Yeah, I would like to make a comment just on the process that you have employed, which I think has helped the committee tremendously in understanding the project. Typically, what we frequently see, even in large projects like this, um, the designer or architect will present us with fait de complete. And then our responses to that is, well, what's the mass thing? And then some people get into the details, and it becomes chaos. I think we just recently noticed that with a project that is not too far away from where yours is. So I just want to commend you the process that you have employed, and I think any good architectural firm would actually employ that process, where you start off with amassing first so that we don't, you don't obfuscate our focus. And then, you know, frequently some people will talk about massing, some people will talk about details, and it's confusing. You have really set uh, a strategy that we actually advise architects to follow on certain large projects, which you have done. But it's rare that anybody will actually do that, and I just want to commend you for abiding by that, which makes our task a lot easier. There's a great team behind this yeah. so far. Martin? Appreciate it. Uh, yes, uh, and I like the. F I agree with hindsight. I like the fact that you did this little study of our market square and the Athenaeum, and and you you kind of soaked in some of the the richness of our environment, uh, the scale and the, the language. My big problem is, and I, I don't. You got to get closer to a mic. I don't think I can get over the inauthentic quality of what you're proposing. Now, what you're showing is, is a little village of buildings, and really it's only three buildings. I mean, you're not proposing that we have firewalls through every section of the character. No. See, okay, that is, that kind of inauthenticity, I can't, you know, it, it breaks my heart to see something like that for our historic district because it's it's fake. So, so okay. and you can address it, but yep. let me finish. Yep. It, I would hate for you to do that because it's a fake vintage that a visitor to the city, you know, would look at that and go, "Is this several buildings? Is this three buildings? Is this when was this built? It's got the language." And it's got the quality of like separate buildings that have been built over time, but in fact, it's not. It's, and to me, you know, that kind of inauthenticity is something that 
I would hate for us to, you know, to pursue. Sure. Um, you have a big build. You have three big buildings. Don't accept it and do something more authentic with that and provide some language that carries throughout the whole complex. Uh, I'd rather see that than this sort of like, you're, you're trying to stop the eye from just racing through there. I get that and that's great. I think you can do that. You need to pull that off, but I think you can do that without being inauthentic and, and trying for this faux vintage. Um, yeah, I just, I like what you did with the uh, Russell Street building at the beginning. I'd love to see that carried out through the rest of the massing of that building because uh, I like the language you're working with. Um, one of your conclusions uh, for the Market Street study was that you had a unique top. Right now, this is your tops very slightly to to go with that deception. Yeah. But um, you know, I, I'd like to see something up top there that that uh, you know for this new development. But anyway, I, I cannot get past this this notion of inauthenticity and deception. So, so I, I, one I agree 100% with, and I think we, we're we're going to work because we haven't gone into the building yet, and we know the makeup of these buildings is a lot of smaller units, a lot of smaller spaces. Um, so, the, and you can see the office building. We're not hiding that that's one building. It's uh, got its consistent facade that's wrapping that building. We give it a little bit of a terrace and a tie back to some other stuff. But with these apartments, it's very, it's not gonna be very difficult and the, the design team is going to hold to where those divisions are and we're gonna work our apartments around where those are. So it's much like what we do with some of the repositions. We go into towns now where, where there's a lot of buildings that were built at different times and we gut them and tie them together. That's what we're going to end up making this feel action, like. That's a genuine action, right? That's but, a genuine but, thing that occurred. Yes, and we're going to we're going to we're going to design through that to that point. That's the intent, right? We can't make it. We can't put old buildings here. You already have that across the street, and we honor that, right? But what we're trying to do is still have a vocabulary, and and I and I appreciate the point of. <laughs> The, the end building. As you can see, we're starting to take that ribbon and carry it in all the way through the different layers that we're gonna put on the buildings that were kind of the elements of the building. So it is, it's a great point. And the reason that we have bay windows on the condo and we have the strip, these horizontals on the, on the residential and we keep the vocabulary for the office building. As we're trying to craft through it, we're not trying to hide that they're, they're, they're unique to each other. They're, they're, they're related to each other in a way that we're trying to make sure that that vocabulary carries its way through each one of the three buildings. But we are building three buildings. But they need to be broken in a way to make the town still feel like it's part of the town. Because you have a, a fabric that's part of Portsmouth that we don't want to negate by just knowing that we could do a big building. So we're caught, we're caught, right, of being not not true because these are new, brand new buildings, but we're also trying to make them work as modern buildings. And if they were, if this was the, if these were all here, we would probably go in and gut them and make them all tie together for the developer who wants to renovate them. So that's kind of the mindset we're going after. If we're if we're successful, you won't care whether they're new or not, ideally. But we do want to make sure that we're breaking them in a way that makes sense visually. Anything bigger than four, what I think we have four different bays or three bays each, that you, you start, it becomes too big for this neighborhood. And the, the proof is in the pudding across the street on Deer Street. And we don't want, I mean, that's, a whole, that, that's the kind of what we're trying to avoid is one big, long, huge facade of a building. But at least they're genuine. I mean, uh, there, there's an authenticity about them that, that you know, I can accept. I, this, you know, this just this hurts our district. I, I know you're trying to you're trying to relate with a scale that's that's minor and and to show these smaller buildings, but to create this Potemkin village of of different facades on the same building, it's stage work. Well, the the, the bad example of that is your Portwalk Place building 
right? We know that, right? We see it, I, I recognize that there's one or two pieces of that facade that work, but it, it's not working, right? And, and we, we, I understand this is the, the kind of the economy that we're in, you know, how do you make it work and not make it look like it's a, a, a part of Disney World? So it's a, it's a concern, 100%, and I appreciate your, your concern there too, because we do wanna make sure that we're wrapping similar details throughout that one building each one of the buildings and you know we're going to have to go back and prove to you that we're not but if you look at your town i'm going to go back to the the market street example it, it, it would be hard for me to tell from a distance that that upper building on market square is not all built at the same time except in reality it probably isn't but it may be and i've been trying to look through it and it doesn't matter to me right that there are different buildings, but I bet you, you I, if I had that as a building, I would have renovated it all as one building. And that, that's what, that's the mindset we're going after. And, and maybe it's maybe it's fake, but you can't do much about going backwards. May, may I ask a, just just a question? Are you um, are are you reacting to the sheer variety of the different facades that were showing on each of these small blocks, or is I am. it okay? And yeah. also the fact that you're. You're squaring off the facades in, in a way that they they kind of step, right? Because you're tr trying to make this, you're trying to make it look like these buildings were built over time, over different periods, under different circumstances. It's a fake history, and that's that's what wrenches me to think that we would do something like that. Yeah, I think we're very we're very interested in uh, making the facades and the treatment of three buildings feel more cohesive and not trying to hide the fact that it's a new building. And I think internally we've, we've been talking about that quite a bit as to how to establish a few of the successful portions of each of these little pieces of, of the facade and use that to make a cohesive whole and not try to make this feel like Building 2A, Building 2B was built in the 70s, and this one was built in the 80s. I think we want to be more cohesive. Can you can you, can you go to page 24 just for kicks and look at the uh, image D? I was just going to show you this yeah. building that's on the screen. This is actually one building built at one time that, yeah. that was built over 100 years ago that yeah. has broken itself down into that same effect. It, it is an it's entire it's a, block. It's a modern interpretation of something that you were that the history has, and, and you you've done a modern building. 20 years ago, maybe 10 years ago, I don't know which one it is, but it's right on Market Street. The Popovers building. The Popovers building. <laughs> now, you may or may not like that, I mean, because that's no different than the faux building that we're talking about right now. It's got a couple of different yeah. buildings next to it. Don't speak to them. <laughs> but, I mean, <laughs> I just, I just uh, stepped in something. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oops. Margo? But the reason I like that image is that you have a very 150-year-old uh, building right next to a 10-year-old building, and they have a nice vocabulary. They talk to each other. Yeah, the, the lower right, the D one. So the one all the way to the right on that image is a, is, a, is your old building, which is, I think we, we photographed again, that one there. That's yeah, F, yeah, the right? Yeah. And, and it's really nice. That's, that's actually my favorite building in your town, by the way, F. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you look at that image, even if you, you brought up F, those two together look nice, even though one is much older. But then the, the other two buildings, the popover building, is those are all brand new. But we're, we're, it, it's a history that's not too foreign from your town. Is, is I kind of, and I, I think the images that you were just showing uh, of, your, of your Google Earth were, were very similar in that. It's our, it, 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 but then, but then you can have these huge buildings, which is A. I think A is what you're looking for, right? Where it's all one, one vocabulary, but it could be broken up. But you have plenty of those in town, and I, well, <laughs> I'm not saying they're bad. We, we always like good architecture. Yeah, but I guess, Brooks, for, from our standpoint, we're open to either option. I guess we just need to have, an, you know, a little bit of direction going <laughs> forward. You know, is there a preference one way or the other? You know, across across the committee is. Are we going, you know, we've, we've presented this option, but we're also open to other options at this point, obviously. Okay. You know, with the office building, I think we accomplished some of what you're talking about. You know, so if you, you go to the president images in uh, page 23, um, we incorporated some things that are very similar to what we were looking at in, in B. Um, you know, if we had something that had more consistency like D in the center of the site, 
but blended between those two? Is that something that you know might be more palatable, or are we kind of steering in the wrong direction at that point? Um, I just can I say something? Margo? Architecture. Margo? I'll let others speak. John, yeah. Oh, John, please get it. You've got to get it, other people to speak. This is a one-on-one -on -one right now between Martin and the architect. I don't like the way this is going myself. I'm being um, I don't agree with Sean. him. I feel, I feel it's very, he's spoken very strongly. And now, I, now I'm hearing the architects wanting to bend the whole project. No, that wasn't the architects, I apologize. Okay, so yeah, why don't we open it up to other thoughts and opinions? Rich, did you want um, to Yeah, and I'm, I mean, I'm new to the HTC, so I'm, um, you know what I mean, I'm trying to, I'm, learning a lot here, I'm absorbing. Um, but I do have a lot of experience. I own a business in the historic district. You know, I grew up here. I've seen how the town has changed. I know, um, you know, and we've, I've, my brother-in-law actually lived in the Rusty Hammer building, um, you know, that was built as one big building. And now it's been broken down into several buildings. And I understand Martin's point about, you know, not wanting to create a facade like a Disney World where, you know, it's just a facade that looks like what it isn't. Um, but I don't think this looks like what it isn't. Um, I, I understand it looks like it's broken up. It's better than one big, big, long, you know, the same of, um, you know, just just all the same. Um, like, you, you know, I mean, uh, like you mentioned, the um, Port Walk Place. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we don't want to build, I don't know. I'm, I'm a conflict because it's always like, why are we trying to build old buildings? Um, you know, we should always be building modern buildings. We don't, we're not trying to build history. You know, we're trying to preserve the history we have, but the new stuff we're building, we don't, you know what I mean? Like, we don't need to build like we built um, in the 1800s. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll stop there. <laughs> I like the idea of building like we did in 1800 because those buildings last a couple hundred years. <laughs> and many modern buildings don't. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Um, Stylistic. Modern buildings are not because of their <coughs> style, but because of their program. I got it. Um, we can build wiser. We can build more efficiently. Lots of things. Um, I, unlike Martin, don't mind the breaking the pieces up, partly because, and I think this is the underlying argument in trying to have a, a group like this controlling or... <laughs> bumping the architecture around is is the providing a comfortable setting for our historic buildings which are unique virtually in the world yep. virtually in the world um, and the way that we've for a couple of hundred years lived with them with changing horses and buggies and electric cars and automobiles and all of the things changing, technology changing around us, the way we've continued to live in those buildings a couple hundred years old is, is unique in the world. Um, so providing a setting for those buildings, I think, is a thing that we should take on as our task. I agree, modernizing our town so that we can have the modern things that provide for a stimulating economy that's good, but being able to do that with a real sensitivity to the material that's around us, that's the art that you are taking on as your task here. Can I say, I'm excited about your program. I'm excited about the way that you've demonstrated, the way that you've broken things up. I'm pleased with the, just simply the facets of the buildings that you've shown us. Um, in a time when we could make that all smoothly out of concrete um, and, and you've chosen not to to do that I have a couple of issues yep um, I think the glazing has taken over the project um, I'm sensitive to that because I live in the 18th century yeah. um, and and I believe when I see like my town I see it as an 18th century town that's what I see when I peel the pieces back it's true it's not it's a mess of different things yeah. but that's what i see i think that's some of the the most precious parts of our community um and and i think you're overdone that and you've said it in a way that very few other buildings in town and i would say uh, you know I, I would say mostly just a couple of modern buildings uh, have this much glazing compared to their just a rough number of glazing per square foot of sidewall and don't 
design a building on the basis of that. And don't think that that's what I'm asking you to do. But I think the glazing's taken over. On the, the uh, Russell Street and the, the, the Titanic end, um, I think it's over the top. I think it's the thing that we shouldn't do. I don't think it's a good thing for our community. What you call the rental building? The, the, the uh, oval end building. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, I, 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 I see that as just totally missing the point. We have very, our tradition of architecture is not taking organic shapes, like the organic shape of this lot, and converted it into buildings. We, we have rectilinear buildings, mostly rectilinear buildings. Right. We have a couple of round-ended buildings on corners, special buildings. They usually set their front doorways on that. They have special corners. This is just a corner, a celebration of glass and corning. Um, the other end of the building on Maplewood Avenue, to me, uh, the, the office the part, uh, I, that three-story box of glass that's articulated against the side of the building. I don't think I've got another building in my mind in, my, that, in our town that has that kind of articulation on its first floor or second floor or third floor and then has this other plate on the fourth floor and the base of it just virtually made of glass and glazing bars. I think it's, I think it's pushing the envelope way too far. I think it's, it's a huge mistake. Just to say, though, I'm just one vote, and I'm going to keep talking about it. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, these are. The, the, it's interesting that you guys are on different parts of the table. But you know, um, we've always been on different. <laughs> parts of the table. <laughs> if you find that interesting, no, we I, don't. No, so, so it is. It is one of those things where we're. You know, obviously building this scale, and and as we're. You know, our party is trying to make sure that we are breaking it up into different buildings. That's a. The concept that to be the the canvas in which the ideally uh, historic elements of this town are part of, but it's not limiting you. Um, I, I I I I do recognize that there's a lot of glass in the concept that we're working on, but again, that is its modern approach. And we, if if it turns out that that's going to end up being too much glass for this town, then you know it's something we're happy to. To, to visit, but it, 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 what's, what's interesting is that this, this isn't, these, these look like they're, um, like they could have been built 100 years ago. Believe me, when we're done detailing them, you'll know that they weren't, but you'll be happy that they're part of that progression of new buildings that still look like they fit. Um, that's where we're, we'd like to go. And the fact that the, the, the middle building, I think, is the one that seems to be where the most concern is from some, maybe some of those window patterns on the middle building, the, the, the little triangular building of the condo, those are what we did a punch window version just to see if it would, it would last and, and then wrapped it on the end building. Uh, we're trying to make it look like you have a series of pieces that continue to follow around. Um, but I, I, I'm sensitive to the concept that it doesn't look like, a, like what it is. Um, that it, it's, a, it's a concern that is definitely following us. We tried so far, as you can see, the, the concern of having the, the two-story base on that whole building was to be that element that wrapped it and let these other elements be something on top. But, you know, it's, um, it's, this is our, uh, our sketches, which we're in the process of trying to make more fundamental to your town. Um, the glass that you're seeing on the two ends helps create some form of icon. Uh, to the town, uh, it may not be what you guys are hoping to see, um, but it could be those two ends. One is they're along the train tracks. They're part of the industrial aspects of this town. You have open cranes with more, you know, steel than this glass end. So the intent was, this is more of a homage to that part of your town, which is a big part of it. And you know, if you you, you mentioned all the boat building and all the other ship repairs and all that other stuff that used to be here, right? When you were talking on the other project. There's a lot of industrial elements right along Market Street that we're allowing this building to be part of, or at least respecting with this, this glass building. But it's really going to look more like a metal building on the end. Um, and it will you know, be quite spectacular having uh, you know, rooms there if you could. But I understand that it might be too much. Um, but I, I actually think tucked back behind that park, it might be pretty spectacular to come along and see something like that in the distance and then keep going into Bricktown. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I definitely hear the, the need to make sure each one of these buildings feels like a whole building, but I'm concerned about it feeling like 
too big of a building, so we're, we, we have some art crafting to do to, to, to satisfy you and also you know, make sure that we're true to your historic history. Um, we're not there yet, obviously. Uh, Reagan, do you have something you wanted to add? Um, could, yeah, could I jump in? Yeah, please. Um, yeah, no, I think these are all really great conversations. Um, and I, I love everybody's comments. And I think that, again, I want to just agree with Heinz that this whole process has been really wonderful. I love that these are sketches and your ideas and we're seeing how it's developing. Um, I think that there's a happy medium we can reach with these designs from all the concerns. Um, I, to uh, just like Martin, I'm very concerned about, you know, just sort of phony facades going up everywhere. But if you guys are actually working on slightly changing the program or the layout or something in each of these sections that you're showing, that to me, um, really, that that works. That at least gives some sort of authenticity. That there is a difference. That you're not just slapping on, you know, the different looking uh, skin on a totally, you know, um, consistent building on the interior. So if you can develop that further, I think that's um, an improvement. Uh, I also shared some of Dave Adams' concerns. Um, these are, I think, these are great designs for uh, the scale of the buildings, the, the size where we are in New England. However, they're, they, to me, they are very Boston. Um, they're very industrial. And we are sort of on the edge of the industrial sort of section. So I think that it, they're not totally out of place having sort of an art industrial feel to them. However, you know, the, the image that's up right now um, Nick, you might zoom out a little bit just so that we can see like the Rockingham that's above. I just wanted to, you know, the right half of this page are the actual historic buildings in town. And there isn't quite as much glazing as we see. So maybe there's some room to, I, I'm not saying make all of your buildings have tiny windows. I, I love the bay windows, the stacked bay windows. I love that it kind of <laughs> goes looks a little bit like 55 Congress Street, the building, the 80s building that everybody loves to hate, um, but much better designed. And um, so maybe there's a happy medium. Maybe you can s still continue to have some of these beautiful big bay windows and big open glazing in certain areas, but then also kind of temper that with uh, a little bit more brick that you see sort of in the in the historic buildings that we have in town so that you know that's that's the context that's our that's our our more common language in our downtown um but otherwise i think we're going in a great direction i really appreciate the uh, side that faces the um the railroad tracks i think that's done really well it is so much less of a back of the building look because there's actual interest in how you've done it. The, the, um, even though that, that area that's sort of raised up is going to be sort of like a raised park that, um, is not it's above the parking area, I guess. Um, even that I think is done really well. It's detailed. Well, um, I just really appreciate that because we've struggled so much with back of the building, uh, views that are very common. So, um, so thank you. I, I, again, I think that the, the office building, I think that's probably your most successful one because it, um, is it, its own singular building and it has a, a um, contemporary sort of modern flair to it, but it's, you know, it's still the massing and the, and the volume of it is still uh, appropriate. So, um, those are my comments. Thank you, Reagan. Dan, did you have something? Yes, yes. I, I like the way you booked in these uh, two buildings. I, I do like the modern flatbrush building and then the industrial office building. Um, I think 
where I can see the problems is, is those middle buildings. And I think you're in, heading in the right direction. I think that could be, because that's the side that probably faces most of the old town, where the two ends face the new town, that um, that could be um, done up nicely uh, to reflect uh, our old history with, with your two statements on either end. I, I like that concept. Thank you. I, I, I agree. Thanks. Uh, I think one of the um, elements that uh, make it clear that everything is a flat roof structure is the cornice. Sometimes I wish that the cornice was perhaps more pronounced and detailed. And the other comment I would like to make uh, is uh, everything is simply flat. and. Um, what would happen if in some sections you could actually introduce a mansard roof, for instance? Um, we'll try that. <laughs> and <laughs> then it looked like Disney World, just yeah. so you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we already peeled that one back. But, but I, I think the issue of the center building is, is, is really, it's, it's true to our nature. We, we look at it, um, we've, you know, we, we did a first run on this. Um, it's the one that needs the most work, and it's the one that's the most important to craft. But you know, to your to your point, you are up against a new part of town, which is the north part, and you're reflecting something that's on the south part, which is your older part of town. So we're we're, we're trying to be two things to, you know, the bridge between your two neighborhoods in some respects. And it, you know, if if you kind of zoom in on what, which image is that? This is a good image, uh, twelve. Um, but really, kind of, I don't know if you have twelve up, but you know, this is this is where, you know, maybe if you zoom in a little bit, this is where we're trying to go with this one, is to, to yes, I think the building to the right of this may not have the same kind of character, but we were trying to pull different pieces mm -hmm. for each element on it. Uh, and this is the main entrance to that building. Um, you, it could be that maybe that, that cornice, and this is what we had works. started with, yeah. is there a way we can do a double height entry feel and make this really feel like something that stands out and the other ones kind of fall off to the side of this. And maybe the building to the uh, left, is that right or left? Left? Um, page with left. The, yeah, page <laughs> left with the punch windows. Maybe that needs a, a, a one more, in the center it needs to be bay windows so that the vocabulary feels the same. And what we're trying to do is just have a kit of parts because believe me, from a developer's perspective, we want to make sure that we have like three brick details and three window details, and that's it. And we're just going to try and piece them together so that they look, in my opinion, I think it's important that they look like they could have been built, but maybe not at a different time. But the pieces are going to be kind of, we'll have different color brick, but it'll be the same detail. Or we'll have the same window type, but it'll be in a different place. Maybe we can satisfy the need that, that I think you, you've addressed, you both have addressed that it doesn't feel cohesive, but but also feel like it's different. Uh, and it's a it's a real, believe me, it's some of the stuff that we talk about for hours in the office. So we're, we're trying to do it, to do what, we, we hear you because the one thing I don't want to do is come back here in two years and see this thing built and go, it's just like next door. That would make me very unhappy. But I, I also don't want it to feel like it's the, what's the other hotel that does has the big curve on it that I hate? <laughs> um, Sorry, <laughs> it's on the end of Hill Street, or remember where you turned well, it. The on. High, uh, oh, the Hilton Garden. Oh. And that's where I'm trying to stay away from. Those. I don't mean to, if you guys own any stocks. <laughs> <laughs> We're being recorded. I apologize. No, I love that building. But I, I, this building, it's not the right spot for this building here. And it, it is a real. It's a. It's. It's something we. Uh, and when we looked at our, our, our flat elevations, you know, we can hide all the detail because we just did them in black and white and you can't tell whether they're one building or not. But we do need to make them feel like they're part of the same vocabulary and find their way around, but not feel like it's one big huge mass. I think that's it, right? So when we go back to our mass drawings, you know, on, on, on page, you know, six, the real concern here, and this is what we're trying to play with is, how do you make it feel like it has all those elements but not be fake? And, and, and it's, it's, uh, it's going to have a lot to do with how we play with the plan. It's going to have a lot to do with how we treat the matching elements. Uh, on the flat iron, which has too much glass for some, that building, we're, we're, we're bringing those horizontals back all the way back to the, the front side. And that's going to be the piece that ties it. Maybe there's some 
other vocabulary that we can do on that center building to really show that it is one building, but it actually doesn't make you feel like it's one building. Because there, there's this, it could do two things at once. It can look like it's all the same building, but all at the same time not make it feel like it's oppressive. Because the town, I don't think it, I don't think this site can afford it with all of your small, you know, historical buildings right across the street. And then it also needs to be respectful of where the rest of the city's going. So, um, we're not there yet. Okay. Damn it. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry. Um, so I'm going to throw in a, a few comments of my own and then open it up to the to the public to speak. Um, so I I hear a lot of what Martin is saying and, and I hear what, what Dave Adams is saying. I think for me, the I agree that the center sect of buildings is your biggest challenge. Um, I'm very concerned about the flat top roofs. I think that that, while it screams modern um, and therefore keeps the buildings from being fake modern, it doesn't fit well with the historic small buildings across the street to have these, these flat behemoths you know, there. I don't know what it looked like when you put mansard roofs on, but I would be interested to see what might happen if you could play with some of the textures on the roof. Um, you happen to choose the Athenaeum, which has that very interesting mm -hmm. you know, sort of curved top thing that's not in any traditional vocabulary of rooftops I've ever seen. Mm. It probably exists somewhere, but it's new to me. I do think that your end buildings are more successful um, in terms of being of having their own voice. Um, I am concerned with the amount of glazing on the office building, but I really like what you did with the twisted, the twisted top, I'm, I'll call it. Um, with regard to the flat iron state building, um, a lot of people think about Portsmouth as being a clipper town and you know maybe that's a ship or something, but to me it read locomotive, a la the 1920s, the uh, you know the, the very stylized going to Chicago. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and you're right next to a, you know a railroad track, and I don't know if you can afford to step back those upper floors to give it that streamlined look of a locomotive. I'm just throwing out it's fun a cool ideas. Idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but you are right next to a, a railroad track, and you're going to have trains you know going past there. Um, I like where you're headed with the back side of the building. I appreciate that you're not making it look completely like the back side of the building. I think a little more work there would be would be useful. Um, with regard to the front of the condo building, you know, you've, you've got a curve going here um, as you're trying to connect those buildings without connecting them. And yet you're not using a curve shape. And I'm wondering why. It's, uh, I think, you know, it goes, to, it, it, it's, it's such a, it, it, there's a lot of problems with the sh scale of that curve okay. um, from, uh, you know, our perspective. It, it, to follow that curve means that we now have a huge building. Uh, it, I guess that's the, the real challenge there. And, you know, obviously we used to have the building going the other way, so I was eliminating the curve altogether. Which, which was, you know, a preference architecturally because you didn't, I didn't, it wasn't something we had to fight against. Um, I, I think that it's, it's, it ends up becoming too much like the, some of the buildings next door. Or, you know, you end up uh, having that, that hotel issue, you know, where you can't really get away from it. And a curve, okay. it's not a traditional shape, you know, for, you have one, though, of course, didn't I even, mm -hmm. I even picked it up when, when we did the modeling. Um, but you know, this is a little curve, right? The one on our facade study has a curve on it, but it's a much sharper curve. Mm -hmm. This other one is way too, you, you, it's huge. And so if you try and do it based on the property line, you end up with a, I, I feel, and, and I'm happy to, you know, hear what the rest of the crowd here thinks, but I, I feel it becomes too much of a, it, you can't hide it okay. then. Um, so I, I think that the, the biggest risk you run right now is, I think, the, the risk that you've identified, which is that 
it gets viewed as another box made of brick with white trim windows. And I don't think you're going to be satisfied with that. So um, I encourage you to, to keep working on that center section. I yeah. wish I could give you fantastic ideas, but you're the architect. Yeah, no, I appreciate <laughs> it. We're, you know, we're, we're trying to use this, um, the, the bay window concept, and we'll try and you know, bring it into a, a 21st century look. But that is a very traditional look of a building of 100 years ago. I think one of you all mentioned it where the bricks, the brick comes down and the bays kind of pop through and it actually looks like a lot of glass, but in reality, it, you can have a spandrel and it, and, it, and it makes its way into both modern and traditional look. Uh, it's a real art and I can't wait to find someone who knows how to do it well enough. And we're, we're trying our best to craft one that gets close to being right. Um, it's the building that I don't think we've spent enough time really refining, but we're trying to see if we're on the right path. But I think we could, now know that we're not yet. Could I get one more short comment in yes, before sir. you go to public? Yeah. Um, that the the center building, the condo building. Uh, I've already expressed that I like the bays. Um, I just wanted to bring up. I, I had a chance to look up what I was talking about, and it's a Monad Monadnock building in Chicago. But nevertheless, um, I think that those bays can give you a chance to maybe change that building in the middle or something. Um, it, it is a lot, it's got the largest presence on the sidewalk. And so I can understand um, some opinions that we've had that we, you know, maybe you should cut that up in, you know, not into a whole bunch of little Disneyland buildings, but maybe two buildings, you know, so it looks like two buildings. And that would also might help you with the curb because I understand the curb and I understand what's driving the problems with the curb and the, the whole thing is the, the lay of the land. I mean, there's a, a huge side. difference from one end to the other on that mm -hmm. property. And um, so it's just an idea. It, 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 yeah, it's a, it's a, you know, we all know how challenging the site is. So <laughs> what we're trying to do is create a base in it. And if the Russell Street redesign happens and we end up with that larger plaza that we're shooting for there's a real reason to have the front a front door at that edge of the building um, and and uh, you know from a developer's perspective we're maximizing the square footage for that one building because there's an economic play that at least has to go into real estate so we want to do it in a way that doesn't feel like that but i i think there's a really asymmetrical opportunity here for us to take uh, another look at how we compose those buildings. Um, so we have our homework cut out for us for next time. Great. We certainly do. So I'm going to open the floor to the public. If there's anyone from the public that would like to speak, anybody online that is waiting, please raise your hand. And we have somebody. Welcome. Could you introduce Hi. yourself, please? Elizabeth Bradder, property owner, 159 McDonough Street. I sent in a letter. I'm hoping that the architects get a chance to read my letter because I tried to make some suggestions. Um, I'm not too keen on the iron thing. It just seems a little overwhelming on the end. I think that's going to be a very interesting piece of architecture. I agree with the, with the many people on the committee that it's a bit much. And I put in some suggestions in my letters as to how that could be toned down and actually tie it to the railroad tracks. Um, I have concerns about the middle um, in regards to the bay windows. If you look at the um, old library restaurant, um, and it has the two, just two of the green ones, as opposed to nine of them, I think that if you limited those a little bit, and you could spread them out on the building more. Um, your middle building that you have that has the um, orange and then it has like a speckled background. Um, I live next to an old shoe factory. Well, I did for 35 years. And that's a similar thing except it has bricks and then it has those windows in it. It does give it some character, but you could tie it in better. Um, if you did those, the, in my opinion, if you put those, ba those bays just kind of randomly on different areas and maybe accented it with some white balconies or something to break that up a little bit, 
And um, my suggestion on the end was to put wood type looking things between the, um, on that um, iron plat or whatever you guys call that, to put some wood between it or something, or put some of the windows that are similar to a railroad window, like they had on the old trains. They had a window that was very unique to trains. Um, and I think that it's interesting that a lot of people like the back of the building. Um, I have concerns about graffiti all over your screening. Um, so my suggestion would be to make it a half wall and then fill it up with plant planters. Um, if you look at the Hanover Street garage, it has half walls and then it has screening. But if you did half walls and then planters, it would break that up a little. The back of that building is has no green really. And it's not gonna because you have a 15 foot setback back from the railroad and then you have 20 feet of road that's required by the um, city for the fire road. So if you moved your buildings forward a little, and I don't know if you can, you haven't built them yet so that you can do whatever you want really, but if you moved your buildings forward, you could create a small green space between the 15 foot setback and the 20 foot setback, which would allow um, to add a little color to it. Or you could put a fence there, a decorative fence or something like that. Um, I personally don't like the the gray on the building in the front, I think that building, the office building, I think that building has some great lines. It's a lot of glass. You could break that up by putting in sash windows in some places. They make big sash windows. I've seen them in, in downtown Boston, um, which would kind of break that up a little. So um, the other thing too is I think this, the walkway where the pedestrians can go needs more green in it. It needs less pavement and more green. So that's my two cents. You're welcome to read my letter and um, in the end you're going to do whatever you want so we'll see what happens. Thank you very much. Thank you. Elizabeth, Thank you. Your, your letter is posted on the website so they will have access to it. Thank you. All right. May I, may I just make yes, another comment? Um, if we go to, I think it's page 15, uh, the Russell Street Development Plan, and if I look at those two buildings, I really prefer the massing of the building on the right to the one on the left. I think that the, um, Sorry. Oh, yeah, I'm waiting. Yeah, you're on the wrong page. I think if, if uh, the building on the left, <coughs> the four-story uh, on top rather than the three-story and the base, it's almost like you're cutting that facade in half, but not quite in half. And I think uh, the base, in my opinion, becomes too heavy for the top. Um, the building to the right, I find more pleasing. Yep. And that, and and you know, to your point, they, they, there, it feels a little squished. Yeah. I think the the brick piece seems like it's a little squished. I, I agree with you. And, and and hopefully, if we do our job right next time when we meet, we'll have some real substantive discussions about facades um, that do start to make that. That tie, um, but we, we, you know, we have to. We, we're going to have to hop over the hurdle of making this feel like it's not Disney World. And if it still feels like that next week or next time we meet, I'm, I think we then we're not next doing week, our job. Give me, that, give me yeah, get time. it done. <laughs> we got to put it in by Friday. <laughs> I got five pages of notes here. I got, I got 36 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. 36, 30, 35 now. Um, but, but, but I, but I, I, you know, your points are really well taken. And I think if, it, because again, we, we believe, and, and I know the development team believes, this is a very important piece for the town uh, and its future. And it can't be a bad backdrop, but it is a backdrop building, set of buildings. It's not to be to outshine the historical smaller houses or the old town. Um, it just has to feel like it fits in this town, not necessarily look old or new. It just has to make, I believe, and you guys know better than I, but it should feel like it fits in this town so that the real, the real great quality buildings can shine. Yeah, I mean, it, I would prefer you to find an excellent solution to that transformation. Yep. We, we, uh, it's our task. No pressure, but you're the third people to try. Listen, they're turns to charge of my favorite number. <laughs> might as well. So we don't remember their names. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't want to be on that list. So, 
a motion to continue to March. So, so moved. Yeah. Second. Second. Which gives you 500 hours. 500 Thank hours. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Team is very excited. I think they're watching online. So All right. If we can have a roll call vote. Reagan? Aye. John? Aye. Dan? Aye. Karen? Yes. Dave? Aye. Rich? Yes. Martin? Yes. Chair votes aye. Okay, we will see you next time. We'll Thank you very much. Thank you. 500 hours. <laughs> I appreciate your help. <laughs> Can I take a, a, break? Take a quick break? Five yep. minutes? Okay. Ten Five minutes. Break. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five
All right, welcome back. So, item next, we have work session requested by 129 State Street LLC owner for a property located at 129 State Street. Wherein permission is requested to allow renovations, a new construction to an existing structure, removal of shutters, addition of dormers, and roof and siding changes. As for plans on file in the planning department, said property is shown on assessor map 107 as lot 47 and lies within the character district 4 and historic districts. Welcome. If you could introduce yourselves, please. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, Shane Forsley with Hampshire Development Corporation. Uh, to my left. Hi, Bill Doyle. I'm the owner of the property. And Steve Wilson, also from Hampshire Development Corp. Okay. So I'd like to um, walk you through uh, a few of the existing conditions of the property at 129 State Street to start us off. Um, as you may or may not know, uh, <coughs> the property fronts on State Street as well as Shafe Street um, in the rear. Um, if you look at sheet A2.1 from your packet, um, you will notice there is a north and south elevation shown, um, the north being on the Shafe facade and the south being on the State Street facade. Um, <coughs> on the following sheet, A2.2, um, that's the west elevation, which faces the J. Smith Park. Um, that's the other existing condition. I'll let you blow it up a little bit, Nick, so you can see. That's here. Correct. <coughs> so the bottom one's proposed, just, just so everyone's clear. And so what's proposed is uh, the removal of the non-historic appliques to the windows, um, the shutters and the uh, decorative moldings around the windows. Um, the intent of that is to bring the building back to its original form. Um, some of the neighboring buildings, there's two that abut it directly further up State Street. Um, they were sister buildings at the time, we understand. Um, and if you look across State Street, there's another very similar building um, where some time ago they had replaced the um, sills and headers to the windows uh, with stone or a granite, um, which you will see in the proposed elevations as well. Um, we propose new windows, um, new dormers on both the north and south elevations, which you will see, um, a shed dormer on the rear facing Shafe Street, and two uh, gable dormers facing State Street. Um, additionally, uh, we propose to replace the existing asphalt shingles with a synthetic slate, um, most likely a single color. Um, there's some reconfiguration on the Shafe Street facade of the existing garage entry points and the uh, pedestrian entry points. Essentially, they flip-flop um, from one side of the structure to the other. And you'll notice there's uh, two lanterns placed over the uh, proposed garage doors. Um, in the addition, uh, which is the rear building, uh, which fronts on Shafe Street, um, we've to replace the siding with a uh, collaborate or composite uh, siding opposed to the vinyl that is there now. Um, and there is also lights which were added uh, above the um, second story balcony on that addition. Um, you'll notice on the details page uh, you'll see some <laughs> trim cornice and uh, molding details um, for the dormers, uh, the fenestrations, as well as some of the uh, panel details that you see um, in the enclosure. Uh, ultimately, you'll see the, uh, the goal for this is to utilize the upper floor space um, for a loft, which will be a work area for Bill, um, as well as uh, complement the interior floor plan um, which you can see uh, existing and proposed within your package. Okay. Right. Any questions to start out? 
The, the city lists this as built in the 1850s. Are there any, were you able to find pictures before 1998? The old photos are, are very spotty. What, what we have found is uh, older photos of the neighboring buildings, more so than this building. Um, there's one capture. It captures about half the building on State Street, um, late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, but that's really it. Uh, what we do know about the, uh, the building was it was originally uh, built and or owned by uh, Edmund, Edmunds Robert, and uh, he was a merchant and a uh, diplomat. And uh, these photos that you see from uh, the 90s, I think it, I think it shows uh, the intent for the facade um, with the removal of the uh, appliques and the, the additional shutters um, back to a form um, as it was back in the day. That's as late as the 90s, huh, that photo? <laughs> that car is in the <coughs> park, right? <laughs> I didn't realize that park was that young. Could I say something about the window heads? Yes, John, please. Thank you. Um, this building was approved for a major rehab 10 years ago, I believe. Maybe it was longer. Um, at that time, I was thinking, well, this is a federal building. And I wasn't really paying attention to that, the gable end and, and um, I'm, but, you know, I, I need some help on this, from Mr. Adams, but apparently the building was constructed in the 40s or 50s. And this person was a diplomat. So it's possible that he could have been saying to himself, well, I want to separate my house from all these merchants and all this stuff around here. The window heads, somebody came in front of us, and I wish I were home now so that I could go through all of my plastic tubs because I do have the information on it. And I'm, uh, I would assume that maybe Nick could look it up, is that it was pretty much proven to us that these were original elements on the building. There was uh, evidence of old nail holes above the windows to hold these things in place. There was um, some paint marks on the brick where these things were painted. And I was quite surprised, as probably you all are, um, to think that those things, 99% could be original. And if they were, and somebody has replicated them, I say that they stay. Um, I, I'm a little shocked by the overall amount of changes to this building also. Uh, thank you. Thank you, John. Other thoughts and comments? I, mean, I, I can just mention my understanding was that this building was built as a warehouse. So it was built by this gentleman who was a, uh, ultimately a, a diplomat, but a merchant. Um, and so it wasn't his residence, it was his warehouse. Can, can I say that uh, it, it strikes me as that's an odd thing to think. Um, in as much as we have these uh, two, just two little bands of, uh, I don't know what, honest to God, uh, marble uh, uh, that's been tooled, <laughs> laid across as uh, floor lines on the second and third floor of the building that don't exist on the building next to it, that it's abutting, which suggests that they were obviously built by two different people at different times. But, but it's a little bit fancy for uh, a warehouse building to see these highly decorative bands of stone set across. But what puzzles me, along with your thought, is that uh, there aren't, there don't appear to be any stone sills to the windows or stone headers to the windows, which is not at all uncommon. I mean, it, it, we have a funny history of there were buildings at, at varying periods that had wood headers and wood sills, uh, it, and then there were buildings that have stone headers and stone sills. Uh, 
it, it, it's mixed, and I've never really found a, a line on it. Uh, I like uh, Chairman Wyckoff have a, a recollection of some some of these decorative <coughs> hoods. Uh, I, for a long time, thought that they were original elements, but I know that on a couple of buildings down, there were some that were clearly put on later in the building's life. So I'm, I'm wondering if maybe both things are not true, that there once upon a time were decorative wood elements over these windows, and there was a time before that than when there was none. I, I really don't know. It would be fascinating to find out. But I, I, I the ones that are there now are uh, clearly are made a look like, not clearly, but they look very much like they were routed out of a piece of MDF and painted. That's so. What we're looking at isn't an artifact to say, but it is a could be a placeholder for an artifact. I do not know. I, 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 Mr. Chairman is uh, very generous, thinking that I might. Uh, <laughs> uh, can I, uh, just for a second longer on the floor, if you do go ahead with putting stone headers and sills on these windows, uh, typically they line up with the coursing of brick. And so to just declare that they're going to, the headers are going to be eight inch, when the truth is they'd probably be seven and a quarter. Uh, but I think that's something you should probably try to tighten up a little bit just so everybody's on the same page going in because all of that has to, uh, an effect on your ultimate window size. Anyway, just saying. Other questions, feelings, comments? Reagan, anything from you? Uh, well, um, I don't have much more to say about the historic design of this building. I don't know. Um, and, you know, in particular, I was kind of looking at the door surround. I would love to get, again, um, take a look at it, get, get opinions as to whether or not the sort of stripped down proposed door surround would be appropriate. I, I'm thinking not, but um, but I don't. That's just a gut feeling, not necessarily a historic feeling. I would love to have the opportunity, or I, I don't know just how much the um, the applicant has spent time at the Athenaeum and really kind of digging up. I mean, you you said that you've looked at other some photos from surrounding buildings, and sometimes that's all there is. Um, but I don't know. I'm a historian, so I tend to dig a little bit, bit deeply there. Um, my, I don't know. I mean, my, um, I'm also concerned about what the major changes that are being done on the back. Um, I'm not very clear through this as to what exactly is being added to it, um, because I, I don't know. I, I don't see drawings and plans showing sort of before and after of at least just the outline of the building. Um, there's just proposed floor plans. So I don't know if the applicant can explain a little bit more clearly as to what is being added. So Reagan, I had some of the same um, problems. The, the best way to look at it is at A2.1, which is halfway through the packet, um, the top and the bottom, it's existing and proposed. So for example, you see the shed dormer bottom left figure on top of that shows without the dormer. And then mm -hmm. the, the sheet below that A2.2, again, top is existing and the bottom you see uh, the dormer lines at the top on top of the the main building. Does that help? Yeah, it does. You know, the, the existing being so much smaller, it's hard to really get the, a good scale and understand, you know, so if, <laughs> next time if you could put them at the same scale, that'd probably be more helpful. Um, and not a good time to say that. Yeah, I mean, particularly the, the Chief Street elevation, um, there are a lot of changes there from what is a very simple 
elevation to something that's um, got a lot of lot going on. Um, so that's just a few concerns, but I'll let other people talk. I'm kind of rambling at this point. Thank you. Um, is the obviously the brick part of the building is older? Is the other the part what was that added? C how? Street. Yeah. The addition. Do you have the date on that? It was you said '80s, I think. I think I even remember it. You know, as a kid, um, see a change. <laughs> um, no, yeah, but yeah, there are a lot of changes to that. Um, I'm not sure, you know, on the Chief Street side. Um, but yeah, that's all we'll see. I, Martin, uh, what's the what's the real intention here? I mean, there are some major changes to the back wooden structure part of it. I mean. Uh, you know, you, your garage doors, your pair of garage doors on the right, and then in the new version, they're on the left. So you got some major changes going on. And before you answer that, is there any evidence that there were dormers in that uh, brick section that are now, that were there in the framing that you want to produce now? Um, so uh, let me take your two questions uh, separately. So first of all, the intent, um, this is going to be my family's full-time residence, and so we're trying to build a, a house. I, you know, I have a, a daughter and a son and a wife, and we're trying to build a house that we can all uh, live in and, and, and turn it into a modern house. And I, again, I don't know the details of the, the history, but I've been living in it now for a year and a half, um, and it feels like somebody built you know, some bedrooms and a kitchen inside a warehouse. So it might have been somebody's full-time residence on day one but it feels like you're in three boxes uh you know three rectangles on top of one another um, we did commission a, a a research project at the athenaeum looking for every photograph and reference we could find you know unfortunately there aren't great references to the front to the back um, that building has changed many times over the years it looks like it was an outhouse uh, uh, originally um, it was clearly not part of the original structure it looked like an outhouse and then it's it became a garage literally like a tarp paper garage and then it moved I, I understand at one point so the intent here and this in a the park is adjacent we saw where the cars were parked in the 90s um, by the way we've, we've taken over the care of that park so you know we now have gardeners who maintain that park but next to it is a pocket garden um, that today uh, and there's a you know a very nice uh, door leading into the garage <laughs> so the cars have a great view of the uh, uh, of the garden so the idea is to put the cars in the dark corner and put a kitchen uh, overlooking that uh, you know little little pocket garden so that's the reason for the uh, the switcheroo um, one of our neighbors in the adjacent, in fact, the, the condo above the candy store said that once upon a time, that's the way it was, you know, that that's, you know, kind of like a hearsay evidence, but apparently there was a kitchen there and somebody moved it the other way around. We're, we want to move it back because it seems to make more sense to have the cars in the dark sure. corner and have the kitchen uh, overlooking the back. And then uh as as shane mentioned um there is a fairly large attic mm -hmm. um that i'm trying to turn into an office so that i can use and that's i i've been up there i'm an engineer by training i haven't seen any evidence of a of dormers it looks like a very old plank roof i doubt it's original from the 1850s but it's you know it's sort of a a, a plank and tar paper uh roof at this point um, and I'm just trying to make some space in the back that's consistent with, it may not have been that way, but consistent with, with other uh, buildings in the area to, to create an office for myself. But you're, but you're also looking to strip a lot of these elements off. What, what's the thinking behind that? I mean. Sure. You so that, there. you know, that doesn't affect the inside space, obviously. I think it looks phony, to, you know, to my eye. Uh, and again, if, if someone actually uh if we had a picture from you know the 1850s and it was really like that it looks to me like it looks to you that somebody took some really cheap material and 
uh, you know, I hate to say, tarted up the building with. Uh, that, wow. Educated in England. You know, with some of this, uh, you know. Uh, back to the roof for a second. Is there any evidence of the Oculus uh, over the staircase? Um, it would have been like a boarded off sort of inside of a barrel going up to a round hole in the roof? No. I think so that I, staircase is completely, <clears throat> it was added in a modern renovation. Really? I, I thought I, I did the balustrade for that. You may, it has a nice balustrade, but it, it stops right on the third floor. It does not go all the way. Oh, no, it only, it only went to the third floor. And yeah. from there up, there was a round window in the ceiling that went to the roof under the heading of where they're dormers. I, I think that the, all the light in the third floor came from an Oculus that was once there. Yeah, it's no longer there. By the way, I'd love an Oculus. Mm -hmm. If you give me an yeah. Oculus. Where are the people to talk to? <laughs> yeah. Do you mean a cupola? No. No, no. no. A, a, a round, like a barrel, like you car made a wooden barrel okay. and stuck a, uh, four inches of it through the roof and put a window on the top, a round window. On the top like that or around? On the yeah, top. On the top. <laughs> yeah, so only God oh. could look in. <laughs> or the <laughs> seagulls. <laughs> yeah, the occasional seagull. Anyway, um, well, uh, so on the back of the building, you're you're expanding the the garage portion of that wooden addition on the back of the building, <coughs> on the sheet street side of the building. Uh, you're expanding that to house the two garage doors because it was a smaller of the two pieces of that wooden. I think it's coming out a couple of feet towards Shafe Street, but not a significant amount. Mm -hmm. But you're also making it wider. It appears that well, it appears that way in the just the way that because yeah the, the building scale, does the, the width of the building doesn't that. change the scaling mm -hmm. really yeah but the footprint of the building doesn't change yeah and mm -hmm. I think in the early days just when you look in the basement the side that's the garage now was like the summer kitchen outhouse because you see some remnants of that uh, what would be the, the fireplace in that area so probably was a very seasonal area and then in the winter they would do that work in, inside the house, but the outhouse was still active. And then you've, you're uh, constructing <coughs> a, 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 a kind of a, a hip roof mm -hmm. thing on top of part of the garage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're trying to get a bathroom up there. And you don't want to go, you, oh, that would go, that would take you past the end of the brick building so that it would stick out. Mm -hmm. You'd see it from State Street if you made it any wider. So we're trying to keep the brick building essentially the same, but for the dormers. Mm -hmm. And then the change, and again, the footprint doesn't change, but we're moving the garage doors from the right to the left mm -hmm. and creating a, a little entryway into what will be the new kitchen where the current garage is. <coughs> and you know what's super interesting, I just say this about what John said, uh, is... I look at those pediments on those windows and I'm just thinking 1952, somebody cut those out of a piece of, you know, something or whatever and stuck mm. them on there. I never even considered that they could be original to the building. And two things, we see these dormers, especially the two gable dormers facing State Street on mm -hmm. other buildings going down the line. And they, I don't think they were ever on this particular building, but also two uh, about a half a block down on the opposite side of the street, so you see almost an identical uh, side to a building there that looks a lot like this, the new rendering, and nothing like the, it has no fanciness to it. So I just say that out loud. So the cue, I think, for this really can't come from, or doesn't come from historic photos. Like Bill said, if they would have found them over there, if, if they had them, that being said, I'm not sure somebody doesn't have them in their attic someplace, but uh, the other thing is that you do see these elements in the, in the uh, building. And really the only other change is right now you have on the side of the building facing the garden and State Street, you have an over a balcony that's void underneath. And so the, the balcony above stays in form the way it is, but they're just pushing those uh, windows out underneath. And it's not a very attractive look right now as it is. 
and I don't believe that that portion of the building really, the brick rectangle, as Bill said, is really the integrity to this to this building. The back, I think, has, may have changed, you know, five times since 1850. I really do think that. If you go inside, and you can see all kinds of different things going on in the underpinnings, stairs, <laughs> old stairs, etc. So. And just to be clear, I, can, I think the building's 1850, can I just, not 1850. It, this is a federal building, so it's yeah. 200 years old. Well, I mean, I defer to your okay. expertise. Everybody here we are person. here. You yeah. all know more about yeah. this than I yeah. do. So. Reagan? Can, can I jump in real fast? Because because I'm, I have the uh, magic of screens at my fingertips, um, I was just looking back. And, and maybe you've said this, and I just didn't get it, but that back portion that sticks out Perpendicular, as I'm looking at the top left. So the, the portion that you're saying that has the balcony and, and all that stuff, that was all built 10 years ago. Yes? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So okay. I just said it so, didn't look authentic to me. So good eye. Not, per <laughs> not particularly well done. Geez, what a great, I guess I'm a historic okay. expert. Other? Huh? Well, I'm, I'm just looking at old. Um, Google Street View images, and there's a great view from Sheaf Street in 2011 showing what the rear L looks like at that time, which did not, which was in, in line with the facade. It did not come out. So that all is new. And in my opinion, if it's all new construction, in, for me personally, you've got a lot more leverage to fix or change or, or do whatever as long as. Um, it's you know still appropriate on the outside, but you're not you're not messing with any historic uh, fabric. Yeah, that was my understanding. Oh. I didn't pinpoint the date that that went up, but we did see so many different iterations of that back L uh, that it was clear that it was. You know, I, I, I maybe the best guess is that it was this outdoor kitchen. You know, once upon a time, but it's. Uh, it's been iterated many, many times since. I remember mm. when there were three old Cadillacs lined up behind the back of this building, mm. a 1937 LaSalle, and everybody mm -hmm. in town banged on the poor man's door every single week asking him if he was ready to yet to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so it was a used car lot. <laughs> well, it was to him, yeah. All right. Um, anybody else, or I'm going to make a few comments. Okay, so um, I can support pretty much everything that you're doing to the more modern back section. Um, I can even get around the shed dormer on the brick building, but the two dormers on the front, I, I can't get behind that. There, there's one example that I noticed in that block of uh, dormers on that front, but pretty much in that area and across the street, those roofs are still intact and and I would like to see that so I understand what you're trying to do I'm hoping that between the shed dormer on the back and some of the small windows in the peak um, and maybe some other funky an oculus things an <laughs> oculus. Oculus. Yeah. You, can, you can accomplish the, still the a couple of oculuses in that yeah. neighborhood yeah still so exists. you can still you know maybe accomplish Ooh. what you're looking for um, with regard to the windows the fancy <laughs> trim and all of that um, it would be it would be helpful to have some more historic information if it's not there it, it's not there and I could see removing these things um, I'm not sure about the addition of the granite because as David Adams pointed out there's no guideline that says before this time it was all window frame it was wood framing and after this time it was it was granite so you can't really hang your hat on that it doesn't appear to me I don't see any evident evidence that granite had been taken out at some point so that tells me that it probably wasn't there unless you can find something that I, says I otherwise that, yeah. so I'm I'm wondering a little bit about that decision to to in, introduce an element that wasn't there before um, so those are those are my general thoughts, and I didn't hear anybody expressing strong opinions one way or the other. It's mostly been discussion, 
as opposed to opinion. This is a work session. I'll ask mm -hmm. a question before we get off the subject. But I think it's most likely that that was that was just brick around those windows. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask Bill at the table because it's kind of a day. You know, there's no sense in is that is that granted an essential component to the to the facade for you, or would or uh, I mean, not essential. Like you don't want to live in the house if you don't have it, but I time to move to Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> first of all, we could, we could, uh, we can do more home, try to get some, try to find another source of information as far as what it did look like in the day. Um, you know, I well, I think that's great input. Let, you yeah. know, let's, uh, in the spirit of a work session discussion, yeah. you know, I, I need to go back and actually go outside and Look at the windows. Try to figure um, it out. Yeah. Okay. There are a bunch of examples, some in good condition, some otherwise, uh, that that just don't make too much of a mistake. Card looking for something that you are interested in finding, even though and, and having to ignore the fact that it was changed at some point. But there are a couple of old buildings around that, that, that of the time when this was built that have very simple clean front facades that that may have something that you're looking for it's funny the building just on the other side of your garden uh, has brownstone sills they've been painted white probably for a long time but they're tooled brownstone tooled very much like the those ledgers on the front of your building which I'm pretty sure are, are marble uh, it's it's a it's a kind of a unique building in that it has a whole residential side and side yard, which you've been lucky enough to inherit, right, mm -hmm. over time. Uh, but for a narrow little building a little, that has no doorway, no sign of any doorway ever having been cut in <coughs> on the front of it, it's always had this dedicated side panel. So while it's not, in quotes, a unique form of a building right here in our town, this is a kind of unique circumstance mm -hmm. to have this happen. We have been looking at these fancy pediments for some time, so some of that's going to be hard to understand can i make a suggestion that uh yeah. before our next work session we have a site walk and and in preparation of that site site walk maybe if there's some exploratory work that you can peel back a couple of spots so that we can see something it'd be a lot simpler to have some of this conversation particularly about the care and feeding of the old brick building i think everyone's pretty much on board with as long as it's not disturbing the the thing on Chief Street is up for grabs. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and again, I, you know, I, well, I'm sorry. I, I would say take take one off. Um, it's a repair, so you 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 can take one off without uh, getting uh, our our uh, approval. Um, and you're thinking, well, you know, I'm going to put it back on, whatever. But mm -hmm. take one of those things off, and uh, then. That, that'll tell. <laughs> it's a good idea. Um, so anyway, thanks everyone for coming together and giving us your suggestions. We feel quite lucky to have this building. You know, we had to go out of our way to get it. Um, and, you know, we looked all over town. We wanted to live in, in town. And um, so we're not trying to uh, disrupt the the, the fabric, you know, we're here because of the fabric. Um, and, uh, you know, our, my interpretation was that, the, as I said before, maybe not, maybe a little too colorfully, that this was, you know, an add on uh, from, uh, you know, some point along the history. Um, if that turns out not to be correct, we'll probably want to uh, upgrade the look so it doesn't look like it was, uh, you know, machined out of vinyl and glued. Onto the uh, onto the brick, and with respect to the you know the surrounds, um, again I'm not trying to create a um, you know if I, I listened to some of your earlier meetings. I'm not trying to create a Disneyland or a faux facade or anything like that. But you know all things being equal, I'd rather be clean uh, and uh, and well made. You know so it looks like it's well made, like it's you know like it's uh, substantial. Um, um, with res one question for me, with respect to the roof, if, if these dormers um, don't survive on the on the front, is it possible to put glass on the roof? Is that how does that you know so I can get light into that 
uh, that corner. If it's in the same, you know, we're, we're talked about slate, uh, because clearly it wasn't tar paper, you know, in 1815. Um, so you, are you talking uh, skylights, you want skylights yeah. or are you talking uh, tunnel, like light tunnels that are more on the on the plane well, as opposed to a skylight that opens and it tends to be? I, I don't know what I'm, I'm asking the question, you know, what, what you know, is. Sounds like Oculus. Well, I'm ta I'm ar I've already got an <laughs> Oculus. Got the, uh, There's an Oculus, Oculus coming. Oculus. Cool. Just too cool a word. Right? <laughs> I'm thinking of no. That's so uh, I'm thinking in front of the Oculus. stairway down below yeah, yeah. it. That's it almost makes sense when mm -hmm. you start saying it. But oh yeah, there's going to be an Oculus, Oculus on this building. Is that is that protrude like the like on the little the bit. warship the monitor? A little bit. So it has a bit of a sidewall <laughs> to it, bit. and then it have, has glazing on the top. Yeah. And do they ever like put? Banded windows and the never, side I never of saw it. that fancy a thing. No, they were they were just stave built wooden structures, typically whitewashed on the inside, typically whitewashed many times. Yeah. Um, we see very. We I've only seen a couple of them that were in any kind of condition. Uh, most of them s deteriorated. It, it, this were done in it's times not before and flashings, yeah. you know, and the rest of that. Yeah, no butyl rubber caulkings, mm -hmm. you know. I think uh, there's one in 129 Daniel. I love Street. the concept. There is, yeah. 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 I was going to say that. Yeah. 129, 129 Daniel, Daniel right which you corner. should know very well, yeah. that that is stave built, like you said. Yeah. And it's there's, beautiful. There's one on the back of Market Street, somewhere around the uh, gaslight, uh, on the back of one of those buildings, mm -hmm. but it's an octagon yeah. okay. sticking right, so up from... I mean, that's a I great, love octagon. That's a, that's a great thing <laughs> right. to work on. In effort, we did in effort have to move things along, have, have, we, have we given you enough guidance at this point? You want to come back in a month? Yes. A month or two? Sure. A month? No, one. All right. All right. Um, so is there anybody from the public who wishes to speak? Our yeah. one person in the public? Anybody online? No. Okay. Uh, then I'll close the public portion of this discussion and entertain a motion. Continue. I'd like to move that we continue this to next month. Thank you, Dave. Second. Second. Thank you. And a roll call vote. John? Yes. Reagan? Yes. Martin? Yes. Rich? Yes. Dave? Aye. Karen? Yes. Dan? Yes. And Chair vote yes. Okay, thank you very much. We'll see you in a month. Great thank you, and I, I really do appreciate your input. And if you good. are interested in cr um, having us come over and take a look, yeah, we'll that's that often up. very a good way of getting people to understand what's we'll going on. We'll see what we get find. dismantled, and then... And, but there's still plenty of things to look yeah, at. Yeah, all yeah, kinds of questions I'll, I'll get resolved and, uh, right there on site. can yeah. talk, and we'll get as many yeah. of you out there as we can. Okay. Um, before, before we move on, Margo, could yes. I ask Nick one question, please? Sure. Yes, I, I would like Nick or Isaac to uh, look back in the records uh, for this particular property and find out when we gave that approval. In other words, what month and year was that last approval for that building? Because that has all the information about those window heads in it. And um, if he could just find that and, and then uh, give it to me, that would be good. John, I'll do that for you. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, You're a guy. She's the spirit. The spirit of the song. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Behind in Safe Street with yeah. like backpacks. Yeah. And like, okay, go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really half a day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, we were sitting in the Safe Street like, is it here yet? Is it here? Um, <laughs> we're going to give uh, Nick a minute to get back and Ryan's a minute to <coughs> come sit down, but make yourselves comfortable. Okay.
Thank you for arranging the additional walkthrough for those of us who oh, no didn't problem. have a chance to see it the first time. No problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, Nick will be back in a moment, but I think we can start. So okay. this is, sorry, I have to read my thing here. No, absolutely. Work session requested by Mill Pond View LLC, mm -hmm. owner for property located at 179 Pleasant Street, wherein permission is requested to allow changes to a previously approved design, changes to the sunroom and roof design. As for plans on file in the planning department, said property is shown on assessor map 108 as lot 15, and lies within the mixed research office and historic districts. Um, Carla, before I have you introduce yourselves, um, I'm not, I wanted to get some guidance from you on how you wanted to parse out this discussion and approval because mm -hmm. you have <clears throat> things happening on the mansion mm -hmm. and then there's the whole question of what's happening with the additions. So exactly. if you introduce yourselves and then please let us Give know. You a quick expansion on my uh, agenda letter how about yeah. that okay <laughs> very good thank you all right uh, Carla Goodnight and Jake Weiner from CJ architects and David Calkins here uh, the contractor for the job um, so I think the best thing to do is uh, just to I'm sure you've reviewed the package and read the findings and the reports and so forth but what I will do is just run through some highlights from engineering quickly and run through some um, of the uh, historian's uh, opinions. And then I'll turn it over to Dave and he's going to walk you through his narrative about how he captured the work that he intends to do to the mansion. Um, and then I'll jump into our presentation and sort of walk you through uh, the pages in here that you know depict some of the work um, and then he'll jump back in and talk about the annex uh, and then you know that'll pretty much wrap it up um, I think you know what we're primarily looking for is uh, you know the we'd like to just get um, a uh, I guess consensus on where we are with the uh, the plan for the mansion, the plan for the annex, uh, and the plan for the basically the new construction of the the round room that we've all the porch enclosure that we've all s seen as being a non, <coughs> non contributing. contributing structure. Um, so those are really our three you know items that we're trying to present in in detail so that we can uh, you know be having a clear path is that helpful yes thank all you. right all right uh, so I'd like to begin with uh, uh, Marty Gorham from Gorham structural engineering has been spending quite a bit of time out there um, <laughs> and he has written this uh, opinion of some of the things that have happened or things that he's uncovered. Um, one of them is that he, he basically says the on page three, the brick and stone foundation is in poor condition with eroded mortar joints and some wall areas visibly leaning out of plumb. His opinion is that the crawl space foundations will require significant repair. Then he goes on to the first floor framing where he says the annex first floor framing is a combination of heavy timber wood framing and direct contact with soil and timber joists over crawl space. Uh, he has outlined that area in his, S, in his sketch. His opinion is that the first floor framing over the crawl space areas is in poor condition and may need to be removed to provide access to the crawl space so the foundation can be repaired, proper vapor barrier installed and uh, make way for mechanical systems. First floor exterior wall framing appears to have been modified numerous times over the life of the building. Some areas which look original are framed with a three by three studs spaced at 30 on center with two by two infill 
studs and sloped furring. In other areas, it appears that new windows were installed and significant but structurally dubious framing modifications have been made. Uh, second floor framing is three inch by five and a half joists joists at 24 on center. Joists are supported by two two by tens and both beams are significantly overstressed. A number of joints have been notched, drilled or otherwise damaged to an extent that they have no tangible structural value. It was observed that one ply beam is fractured. The allowable total load for this floor system is less than five PSF. Third floor, he has a similar description and he's deems it 10 PSF, neither of which is even close to working. Um, roof attic system would be approximately 20 PSF, so the roof will require significant reinforcing or replacement to increase load capacity, which of course would also involve removal of all the slate so that that could be achieved. Inclusion, in my opinion, the an in his opinion, the annex framing is far too undersized, damaged, and compromised to be considered acceptable and safe for any current occupancy or use. The annex will require significant commitment from the owner to provide the structural improvements needed to ensure the building is safe and can remain in service for the future. If you look at the diagram on, there you are, Nick. If you look at the diagram, SK1, you can see in the back he notes masonry wall leaning outward and in the front foreground or towards the bottom of the page he notes uh, foundation wall cracked and bowing inward. So that is a quick overview of this multi-page document. Uh, the uh, architectural conservator that had been asked to come out and have let us know his thoughts has said, uh, as, as described in greater detail below, it is clear that the annex was added to the building in the mid 19th century as part of a greater Greco Italianate style, Greek, sorry, <coughs> renovation to the 1780s historic mansion. It was placed over an irregular foundation and exhibits result in settling. The framing of the annex is representative of a major shift in American wood frame buildings in traditions away from timber and toward balloon. The biggest design concern with either, either approach is how to tie in the original compound Greek Georgian cornice of the main house with the Greek revival cornice of the annex. These can essentially die into one another with creative clean woodworking joints. The most important aspect of this issue will be obtaining an even valley and drip edge at this intersection and we've created a detail, modeled detail on 4.0 that achieves this, this goal. That we'll get to that. And um, I think what I'd like to do is just turn it over to Dave to run through his narrative. Um, and what we've tried to do is, we've talked a, a little bit on site, we talked a little bit at our first work session about the intentions for how to go about moving this, the mansion into a stable condition. So what I, we've, we've done is memorialized the, the construction plan so that when you're approving it, you're approving like the whole concept. So he's gonna just run through some of the highlights. Yeah, and I'll, I'll be brief and then if there's something anyone wants to sort of go into in more depth, we can uh, do that as we go through. And then just keep in mind, I'll go through the mansion first and then we'll address the annex sort of in stride with the rest of the presentation. So the intent on the exterior of the mansion is to uh, strip the paint off of the chimneys, restore those back to natural brick, repoint, um, and replace uh, mortar in kind. We'll do an analysis and everything. Um, the Whittle Walk to take off, ideally, as a one unit, lift it off of the roof and have it repaired on the ground, painted, and then we would put that back as well. Uh, I just want to go into the siding because a part of the chimney and the siding, which is worth noting, is we are um, talking with a company called SpongeJet, 
which is a basically a um, form of sandblasting, for lack of a technical term, but they use uh, foam as the media. And they're able to actually uh, sandblast very delicate surfaces, which would allow us to get the paint off of the chimney and perhaps all of the siding and the trim as well on the main house. And the other fascinating piece about it is it's like closed cell foam. So when it hits the surface, it expands and encapsulates the media or the substrate that you're trying to get off. So we are looking Whoa. at methods of that to certainly deal with the chimney, but even the siding and trim as well. Um, the roof, as Carla mentioned, we have numerous leaks and deficiencies there. So we're looking to take all of the slate off of the roof. At that point, we'd like to uh, sheathe the roof and put one inch poly ISO over the roof to help with an insulating challenge that we're going to have. That detail will be further discussed. Um, the gutters uh, need to be removed off of the house, uh, copper put back on. We're proposing uh, half round uh, copper gutters with three inch smooth downspouts. Currently it is white aluminum. Um, Shutters, we've had discussion about this, but the owners would like the shutters to maintain on the house. Uh, they are on basically the, uh, the elevation sides here. Right and left side. Yeah, right and left side of the property to speed things along. But most of them, all of them will have to come off uh, be stripped, repaired, and if they need to be uh, reproduced, it'll be done out of uh, in-kind material or Spanish cedar is what we've sort of spec'd out through Beach River Millworks, uh, who has the ability to replicate. Windows and storms, so all of the original windows will main, be uh, <coughs> restored completely. They'll come out, sashes will be uh, stripped, all of the muttons, any of that are are, that are damaged will be repaired and the original uh, windows will go back into the house with some improvements. Truthfully, we're looking at a wooden exterior storm. Uh, we're still narrowing down the exact product on that, but it will be an exterior storm. We're gravitating towards wood, but because it's Eastern trim and we don't have that extra blind stop, it's just making sure we don't have a clunky wooden uh, uh, exterior um, storm but our intent is uh, wooden storms on the outside. Siding and trim, as I discussed, we're really positive that the sponge jetting technique will work on the wood so that we can strip. Our intent is to strip all paint off of all siding and exterior trim on the mansion, get it down to original wood, sand, and then from there we're able to uh, prime and paint appropriately. There are numerous areas that need repair. Obviously, we would, we would repair in kind. The uh, sort of the meat of this section is I would very much like to remove the bottom 18 inches of siding around the mansion so that we could access the sill beam. We have access on the inside, but really there's signs of rot and degradation. I'd like to be able to see that from the outside and then appropriately flash. Um, and in doing so, if I could remove the bottom 18 inches of siding and sheathing, we could do that so that we never have an issue again and then put it back again in kind. Um, the bay window has some issues. It's a CMU foundation and we've now been able to get underneath there and it uh, is not a proper foundation. So we're looking to remove that CMU foundation, put something in there that's more stable and then we could veneer that to look like the uh, stone and rubble uh, foundation that's currently on the mansion. As of right now, it is just a, a concrete block foundation that you can see. Utility building penetrations, we don't have to, I won't get into that too much, but we'd like to clean those up. There's some pictures that they've been done somewhat haphazardly or without thought on how they look on the front of the building. Basement windows, there's four in total that are wood that are not only non-operational, two of them are about ready to fall in. So I'd like to re uh, replace those with wooden windows. Uh, same light cut, a four light. Grading landscaping we don't have to discuss right now. Uh, the annex, as I stated, we'll revisit in this presentation. So then we go to the front of the house or the west elevation. 
those three dormers uh, will remain. I'd like to do the same with siding and trim, strip it down, uh, replace in kind only what needs to be, and repaint. Since this, uh, we've submitted this, the owners, after we've consulted with the window woman on uh, replacing, or sorry, restoring the windows in the mansion, she has the ability to replicate those windows, in her words, exactly. Uh, so we'd like to have her replicate the windows that are in the mansion and put those in the three front dormers. So those will be, um, they're not original now, but we would have uh, her replicate the, uh, the original windows. Window casings, um, sorry, window head casings on the front elevation. There's four of them. And I don't know if the flashing is lead or uh, some type of, it doesn't look like copper or tin, but it is cracked. It's showing signs of where water is able to get in. Mm -hmm. I'd like to be able to cut the siding above that one or two courses at most and properly flash that head unit, restore the trim. Uh, the main portico, uh, same thing with siding and trim, strip it down, repaint. It does need, it has a flat seamed copper roof. Um, it's hard to, set, uh, to say what, uh, what the state of that roof is. We can see it, but uh, it looks like it's lifted in some areas. So as of right now, I'd like to replace that with a new flat seamed copper ro roof. Is it back pitching into the? Uh, not on the portico, sorry. Oh, the uh, bay, the bay window, window. <laughs> the, it pitches back to the building. So I'd like to replace that. That also has a flat seam copper roof. <laughs> We'd like to just put a basically a, a positive pitch away from the building, minimal, and put a flat seam copper roof back on it. The column bases, you'll see a picture further in the report. Um, so there are two pilasters that flank the door, and then there are two columns. The pilasters have, and they, they both have ionic capitals, or what I would consider ionic capitals. The pilasters have what look like an ionic base, but the uh, columns just have a square <coughs> base that someone has put on there. I'd like to take those off and then have an ionic base made. Ideally, if acceptable to the board, I'd like that to be synthetic because that's in constant contact with the granite steps. Um, but we can discuss that. The north elevation, or the left side of the building facing Langdon. Um, this side of the house has some challenges. We have active leaks, not only inside the building, but through the cornice and down the wall. This side, I would very much like to remove all of the siding. Um, a lot of it has uh, some rot and extensive repair on this side, but the the biggest concern is the chimney mass <coughs> blowing the wall. So in between the two windows, and I wasn't able to really capture it effectively with a picture, the, the wall is bowing out where we have some, some potential issues. So I would like to be able to expose that side to framing um, and then obviously replace in kind. Uh, the head casing, same treatment, reflash those, but uh, if the siding's gone, that's a, a non-issue. And then on the east elevation, um, again, we'll get into the annex and how that uh, impacts the dormer up on the roof and as well as the sunroom um, and the stair window. So I think that really is a quick summary of what the exterior work is to include and then we'll go into the rest as Carla proceeds here. Mm -hmm. oh, um, I'm going to just stop there for a second and okay. I'll just ask the, <laughs> the board if, if Option. What, what we've heard, if anybody has any strong feelings, objections, concerns, or questions about any of the work on the mansion thus far. I just have one question about the roof. Um, the slate, reusing the slate, not a possibility? Uh, honestly, I don't know the answer to that. We've I've contacted a few companies to have that uh, assessed better. It has to come off so we can address some structural, among other issues. Um, I might be, I hesitate to say this, but my experience 
from what I know with slate, is it, it, it's going to boil down to how thick the slate, how much wear layer is left on that slate. And so we're trying to seek out the right people to do that. Uh, we've also uh, looked at some synthetic products, synthetic slate that uh, <coughs> we, uh, we're hoping to potentially put up there, but quite frankly, some of the samples we've got have been less than pleasing. So I don't have an answer as to what that will look like just yet. You're being so particular on, on all of this. Uh, it just seems like if you could just stick with the the real McCoy it would be nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, Martin. Um, also with the roof, you're probably going to find the slates are not salvageable. They just get brittle and mm. they're hard to handle at that point. Anyway, um, you're going to put an inch of insulation. Uh, I'm not going to really give you too much, you know, like seven, six and a half. Correct. Value. Yeah, six point nine. Um, I think it achieves two things. One is it gives us a, that vapor barrier first because the roof is framed with sizable timbers, most of which have been compromised, but neither here nor there. <laughs> it gives us uh, a continuous vapor barrier. Um, it does give us 6.9 of effective or, or performance value. Total break. And then inside, I guess, I'd love to do more, but I think we, we start to run the risk of having a weird detail there. Um, That's what I was going to ask next. You're going to also put like a, a five ply or four ply on top of that. So you're going to have to end up with a, at the, at the uh, eave, mm -hmm. you're going to get a little wider. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing uh, just aluminum gutters. Are you going to do uh, a different gutter type? Or? Yep. Yes. Copper. Is copper. copper shows up in the specs. Okay. So half you, round. It co copper half rounds and all mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That'll go a long way toward disguising that uh, gainer at the edge. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We'll mitigate that with extension and raise. So you're not just taking it all up and rise because you're hitting it at an, at an angle. So it's coming down like that at an inch, but then you're when you hit it at an angle, it's you know, it's even thicker. So if you can bring it out a little, and you can almost come down to where you were by just a little build out, which will be supporting the gutter anyway. So, but and I'll have that all detailed. And just one, one last thing: the, the sponge jet. Um, I I've seen where that's been used, and it it sort of it tears up the wood. I mean, it's supposed to be gentle and. and it really, the effect is that you, you end up with a, some of the softer woods being torn out. So, <laughs> but, so I just want to caution you, caution you on that. Yeah, and the, uh, the gentleman I spoke with was very <clears throat> clear about that. So depending on what uh, the board sees fit, if the north side is able to be stripped because of the state that it's in, it's in a punky state, that's the prime place to do a, a sample let's see it on there Testing. and if it does rip apart the wood then it's a you know it's a hard stop the unfortunate piece is the next step is is peel away mm -hmm. or actually heating up the the paint and scraping mm -hmm. um, that the end <laughs> result is it has to be brought back down to bare wood there are numerous layers of paint there any comments with regard to the request about the PVC um, column base? And anyone want to comment at this time? The ones that were there are gone. They're gone for a reason. It's, a, it's in, in some respects an unnatural condition because these people had enough money to have an enormous slab of stone set there as their front entry plate, and and so it is constantly splash and water contact. Mm -hmm. uh, it certainly is uh, going to last longer than the previous material. It can be handled. I'm sure that they, I, I'm going to bet on them being able to pull that off so that with a coat, of, a couple of coats of paint, you won't be able to tell. I, I it is the place for it. Yeah. I personally would support it, particularly because it's so far back from the house and from the road. You know, people are going to have to work really hard to see um, that that's different. Mm -hmm. um, any comments, John or Reagan, or shall we move on to the discussion of the annex? 
and move on as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, me too, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Mara. Okay. All right. Um, so moving on to the actual um, presentation, we have our location map. Uh, we've expanded our timeline to include the uh, people that have been sort of walking through and giving us their opinions of which we are basing these decisions on which they're um, looking at the uh, 2.0 again is just recapturing the existing conditions for a reference. Uh, looking at 3.0, uh, our intention is to follow the recommendations of both you know, the, of the engineer and the historian and the people that have, have been on the property walking through and giving us their opinion and uh, take these historically significant details and preserve them. And what you will see is the trim to be removed, restored, and reinstalled would be all of the pink areas for trim. The windows and doors to be removed, restored, and reinstalled, basically the original windows and doors, uh, or original window and door would be uh, treated with the same um, process that Dave described for the, uh, the dormer windows are not original. And everything to the left of that red arrow would not be part of this description. <laughs> um, so the removal of the all of the framing, which would need to be shimmed and padded out and otherwise modified, uh, the bulkhead would be removed, um, the chimney would be demolished, and then uh, basically the new frame would receive the historic trim, windows, uh, shutters, window casing and all of these details um, as well as the dentals and the um, siding, anything in green would be uh, replaced in kind um, and just the blue areas of the roofing, the chimney and the um, bulkhead would be um, just demolished and replaced with the uh, roofing would be, is proposed at this time to be something different. Uh, so that's the um, the basic kind of key plan because it's just to make it very clear what is happening to each element on the exterior skin of the of the framing uh, once the framing beneath it is removed. Uh, 3.1 follows that same uh, the same thought process with the the uh, restore and reinstall versus replacing kind versus not uh, not salvageable. Um, the bay window on the back, I think from our visit, everyone agrees is nothing we wanna be saving, nothing contributing. Uh, so same effect here, remove, restore. The two dormers that you can see on the mansion have been broken out as also being replaced in kind. Um, on that rear elevation. One of them, I think, is vinyl at this time. Uh, 3.2 covers the third elevation, uh, the north elevation of the existing annex. Same treatment, the window on the first floor is not original or worth, set, worth saving, um, and the rest of the area is um, will be preserved. Um, moving and then the uh, three dormers in the front have were going to be replaced in kind but then um, the owner uh, decided as Dave mentioned that they would rather have them actually replicated so because they're on the front of the building so those are not going to be replaced in kind we'll be correcting that uh, so moving on to 4.0 uh, the new volume, the new proportion of the house would be to align the eaves and uh, bring these two profiles together seamlessly. 
wrap the gutter around. Uh, we've modeled this connection on 4.0. The intention is to align the where the roofs meet, align the, the dentals, and align the um, you know the the uh, bottom piece of wood trim that is sort of begins the whole assembly. Uh, the pattern of the windows has not really been altered other than in height. Uh, again, that porch that's there originally will stay with the mansion and the door and trim and casing and all will be relocated exactly below where it was before. Uh, I believe what it, it's a 30 inch. It's actually 30, yeah, it's 31 and a half 31 and half, 31 and a half inch transition overall for the structure. Uh, and moving on to 4.0, uh, you can see that uh, the uh, there's a new uh, seven and a half foot by ten and a half foot single story addition being proposed in place of where the angled bay had been previously located on the east elevation. Uh, you can see all of the trim windows, siding or trim windows, trim and um, dentals reinstalled on the gable end, as seen in the photo of the east elevation, and then uh, also to the far right corner, um, you see the existing dormer moved over uh, three feet to the proposed dormer location. So that's our our movement laterally laterally across that side. Um, the shadow is the section of the uh, of the eave coming in. Uh, moving on to 4.2, most of the siding on this elevation actually is new uh, on, on uh, both really actually the uh, 4.2 and 4.1, a lot of that siding on the original building is new uh, just because of all the replacement windows and things work that has gone on there, uh, especially on the curved portion. Uh, we are proposing uh, to um, put a window in where that door used to walk out onto the, we're gonna restore a window in that location uh, on the north elevation above the little uh, mansard roof. Uh, which would also be copper. So we would do a copper mansard there uh, in keeping with the copper that's going uh, on elsewhere in the, uh, in the construction. Um, and 5.0 shows a more uh, expanded view of that area. Um, a little bit more in keeping with the roof details uh, on the lower level and uh, sort of matching up with that and, and really leaving the cornice line to be the, the feature event um, in that view. Um, and then 5.1 just shows you another view of how that, that uh, configuration will be, will be seen from um, from the southwest, from actually from Pleasant Street. And moving on to materials, as uh, Dave mentioned, we're, we did get a sample of the slate, uh, faux slate roofing uh, that we can discuss or talk about that as a potential for a lighter weight material um, as well as, you know, long term durability. Uh, then we're looking at a half round copper gutter with a three inch smooth copper downspout that would be installed in, instead of what's on there now. And then uh, all other window locations where we don't have it, a window and of course we would we would have you know go no window by window where these are. We would use the uh, the Marvin ultimate wood with a half screen uh, in in the locations where you know there's no window to restore. Uh, so, and then uh, 7.0 just goes on to sort of 
if, if we want to discuss some of these areas, we just have this for um, just for reference, some of the photos that we had, had seen both in person and uh, and also in, in you know well, at a, have been discussing through throughout our, our work session. So I just have them there in case we want to refer to anything. So I'm just going to have Dave do his uh, last piece of the what he wants to what he's proposing for the annex from a constructability standpoint, and then we can talk about the annex because it's kind of the other half of what I just I'm doing the where and he's doing the what. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so after a, a lot of sort of fact finding and research and looking at the annex from a couple different angles, uh, we've settled on the fact that we would like to take that back annex down. Uh, as Carla has discussed, we would uh, very surgically remove certain aspects that we've identified as historically significant and set those aside to be uh, reincorporated in the new annex, which just to be extremely clear, would be the exact same footprint as the original annex. We're not looking for an expansion in any way. Mm -hmm. With the exception of my box bay replacement. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yes, with the exception of the uh, one story addition replacing the uh, bay window out back. Mm -hmm. uh, so in doing that, we would take the building down and as a note shown on SK1, uh, in uh, Gorham's structural report, we would keep the rear L foundation, which is original to the building. Um, the uh, crawl space, the first section that's inaccessible other than from above, from there back would be removed. Uh, there are kind of three sections. If you're looking at his drawing, there is uh, kind of a note that says uh, mansion foundation. And then there's a section that is 14.6 feet. That is the kitchen L, which now has been incorporated into with a bulkhead. That wall would stay, but then going beyond that, the next 10 foot eight is a section that's inaccessible. It is, there is a, a, a rubble wall there. How far down it goes, we don't know, but that is basically infilled with dirt. Then the final 11 foot nine is a combination of a brick wall over a rubble wall um, that has been noted. There are areas that it's failed. So we'd be looking to basically take down the uh, 10 foot eight section, 11 foot nine section and replace that with a, uh, a new foundation wall, proper foundation wall, which we would then veneer on the outside to look like the rubble wall. Um, <clears throat> we would cut the portico free, which is, uh, let me just grab the, it's illustrated on Carla's drawing, which is 3.0. Mm -hmm. So there is a challenge here, but um, not one that's insurmountable. That portico really isn't on a foundation. It, it's depicted again in, in Marty's sketch on SK-1. The original foundation jogs in, and then we have the portico outside of that. Because it sits on some granite slabs, we don't know what's underneath. We are seeing some sort of stressing uh, conditions on the section of the foundation wall inside of that, but we believe that's mostly because the bulkhead was cut through. So now we have a disjointed wall here to accommodate a bulkhead that we don't want on the front of the house, and we have the portico pushing in. So our intent is when we relieve the annex from that portico, then we'd have the ability to hopefully address underneath the portico, but the intent is to leave the portico there while we do our construction. Um, we could then address the one section of foundation, original foundation wall that uh, mm -hmm. is, is compromised. From there, again, we would build uh, in the same footprint, reincorporating the six windows, the shutters, the door pediment, the transom, the door, the cornice molding, and the entry portico. Um, 
The height, as Carla mentioned, would only differ. The footprint would be the same. The difference would be in the elevation of 31 and a half inches, or I'd round it up at 32 inches so that the soffits align. Uh, you see the connection detail on the soffits. And uh, there are a few areas. The dormers are the only areas that would get the Marvin. I'm sorry, I misspoke. The dormers would get the Marvin uh, ultimate wood sash windows. And then we'd have some on the three point two <coughs> on the north elevation as well. And that would all be clearly identified. So if discussion uh, requires, we can discuss how we've gotten to this point, but uh, we've arrived at really the most uh, reasonable uh, outcome for this building is to salvage what has been identified as historically significant and then remove the rest. Um, and so that's our intent. Okay. Well, thank you for all of that. Um, if I could guide the conversation a little bit, I maybe just ask the big question of the commission, which is, does anybody feel that taking down this annex structure is destroying a contributing historic <coughs> structure and that it is not the direction that the commission would support? John, can I hear you sigh? Uh, yeah, I'll address, yeah, I'll address that. Um, you know, I went in it twice. Uh, so uh, I said that. And um, looking at trying to rebuild it, <coughs> very, di very difficult. Um, it could be done, in my opinion. Um, I said that from the very start. This could be repaired. Um, you know, new studs could be brought in, sistered in, um, leveled out the floor joists, uh, could be replaced up on the second floor. But um, so it all boils down to whether or not they have a level floor that continues on into the mansion. I think that's a lot of it. And also on the other side of this uh, annex, the roof uh, interferes with a relatively important window at the top of the stairs. Um, is that reason enough to tear it down? I don't know. I, I will say that looking at the southwest elevations, and, you know, I just want to say I understand all of the rationalization, all of the explanations I've had in talking with the contractor. But when I look at the southwest elevation, all of a sudden aligning the soffits is awkward. I, I don't know what's the matter. And it might be the possibility of the elevation of the way it's drawn or depicted. It's, it's, it looks flatter. Uh, and obviously it, it isn't flat because you are following the original foundation. It just, I just, uh, I have trouble uh, with the southwest elevation. That's me. Thank you. Oh, one more thing before I, I lose the floor. Mm -hmm. There's no chimney. The chimney's gone completely. And I think the chimney should be put back. I would almost, if you're going to go to all that trouble with the portico, I'd almost like to see somebody say, well, geez, we could save the chimney, too, because it is uh, an original chimney, and there is a cook oven and everything attached to it down, downstairs. So uh, maybe the fact of not having a chimney on that thing, what makes that uh, the annex look so plain. Thank you. Thank you, John. <clears throat> Other comments about to tear down or keep? I, I can support what you're doing. Is, is this a public hearing or still a work session? Still a work session. Yeah, I, I can see with the effort that you're making on the main house, uh, I can see that that buys you some consideration for what you need to do to the annex, to the to the back of the house. And mm -hmm. so I, I fully support it. Any 
Anybody else? I, I understand completely. I, I'm, I'm certainly a believer in that, that tearing it down and rebuilding it makes more sense than trying to deal with the issues that are there to get what they want. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm sort of on board with, with all of the pieces and parts and the efforts that they put into this until we get to the thing that I wished would never happen, which was the Eve's lines of the dependency lining up with the Eve line of the mansion house. And then in the midst of all of that, we also lose the chimney. And, and I, I don't know, I don't know what anybody expects from me other than I, I'm going to have a hard, I'm not going to be able to support this. It's not a hard time. I, I don't see how I can support this. So uh, it, it sounds, unless I don't want to jump in front of anybody who hasn't had a chance to speak, but it, I'm not hearing anybody say that they feel that the 1815 structure as it exists today has to be saved, raised up, because it's worth a bazillion dollars of historic value. Okay, great. Um, I'll, can I yes? can I jump in? Yes, please. Right I I I do think it's a value, but it's any time we have a, a demolition, we have to weigh it against what's being put in its place, and um, yeah, we've been there. I was there. It's you're. It's it's still it's going to look new. It's it's a new construction addition. Um, you're going to lose that even if you're stripping all the paint. You're going to lose the patina of age that's in there. However, I'm incredibly impressed with the effort and the detail. You know, for for a reconstruction of something like this, for something that has to be torn down in reconstruction. You, you guys have hit all of the benchmarks of what you need to do to do it right. And so um, what I'm seeing here, I, I am, it's, uh, I totally see what John and Dave um, are uh, concerned about with losing the, what's now the misalignment of the, the eaves and everything, because it, uh, it looks like a dependency now. And when you bring it all up to level, it's, it's, it, it makes it less um, subservient to the original house. But I'm not sure how, uh, it's hard to know without seeing it. And even with these sort of drawings and renderings, I, I don't know how noticeable that is really gonna be and how important that's really gonna be. Um, and so, I, you know, I'm again, I. I think I can support this um, just because you guys are going to all the effort of, of saving and, and reusing all the important pieces and building it exactly um, the, the way it is now, just raising it up a little bit. I am concerned about the chimney um, as well because that's something that was pointed out in the um, in Stephen Mallory's report, who. I know him, and he's he's very knowledgeable. And so for him to point out the fact that there is this very special cook stove there um, in its position, uh, I, we, I know we don't have purview on the interior, but that is a concern. And to have the chimney totally taken away, it makes me concerned about what's going to happen with that that cook stove and the language of what was going on in this L. Um, so, okay. thank you. But, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> so I just wanted to sort of follow up on a couple of things that I've heard um, and that I think are interesting um, as far as what would need to be done to stabilize the building. Um, the structural engineer has, I mean, the first floor is built on the dirt. So that will all have to come out and nothing will be saved because it's sitting on the actual dirt right now for most of it. So that will need to be reframed, you know, dug out and foundation will need to be re-stabilized. Somehow we'll have to get under there, stabilize all of that and install some new foundation 
uh, which would be veneered with the with this appropriate stone and then reframe that floor and then the same would need to be done to the second floor because he's also said that that does not have the load carrying capacity so that would need to be replaced with something that was code compliant and would have a load the appropriate load bearing capacity so same goes for the upper so by then what we have left is walls and in, in the roof structure we have the walls and we have the roof um, and so and those are also not compliant and would need to be padded out and the roof would need to be also you know needs to be basically reframed from the inside as well because of the the you know how psf is you know in the single digits and you know very very low um and the other piece is that you know we took a, we did some soul searching on the kind of the fabric of you know the architecture and the history the the line of of thinking over the history of the building and you know the the mansion is clearly a gem it was constructed with care it was constructed it well designed and and the details were were done well and it was really um, you know a, a, a proud piece of architecture and um, you know that the, the you know, as compa compar comparably somewhat with the Langdon House. And when the Langdon House elected to put an addition on, they hired a famous uh, architectural design company to come in and, and build this gorgeous complementary addition, which, um, you know, just really, I think, is, is the right thing to do for a building like that. And... I think what the most of the people that have walked through in this list on page one have all somewhat agreed that people who put up the annex and you know kind of slammed the roof line to the top sash of the window and built it on the dirt and all of that uh, just really weren't the best craftsmen of the time you know much like the people who then came in in the 70s butchered the attic and left us with you know that that issues and everything that we're facing up there so what kind of because I've struggled back and forth too and what kind of threw me over was it should we preserve this poor poorly constructed you know design that's it's that it has assaulted the 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 mansion should we preserve it just because it was badly done a long time ago instead of badly done recently? So I think that's kind of my, you know, it's that yeah. that's kind of where I said, okay, let's preserve what is valuable um, and, you know, do the correction so the window can be free as it was in the 1800s. And, you know, it, I, I think I'm hearing that. That's our board, thought. The, that the board supports that. I'm not. I'm not hearing anybody say oh, okay. that this mm -hmm. needs to be reconstructed and, and saved. Okay. What I am hearing is that there are some concerns about what you're proposing to rebuild, mm -hmm. specifically the loss of a chimney, which I echo that concern. Mm -hmm. The uh, the lining up of the cornice, well, an important um, objective of yours has it, and and how the roof line mm -hmm. um the uh, ridge lines up mm -hmm. to me is creating a building that is no longer an annex and no longer an addition and no longer something that was subservient to the main mansion to me this now reads like something just as big just as heavy just important as the mansion when our guidelines say that it, that really shouldn't that shouldn't be what you have when you have an addition and it certainly wasn't what they put mm -hmm. on in the 1800s um, so and the the other thing I think that makes this um, 
new annex look um, on the same level as the mansion is the size of your dormers. Because if you look, unless it's an optical illusion, but when you look at the photos of the mm -hmm. dormers in the back, they're petite, they're slim, and these are, are modern big ones. And so when these you look would, at those two... These would be the same dormers that are on there now that are previously, yeah. I, I understand yes. that. But what's what you have there right now mm -hmm. is a house that's lower mm -hmm. with a bigger dormer. And when you bring the ridge line up, Mm -hmm. and now the two buildings appear to be the same size, mm -hmm. you now have dormers that are much bigger than the dormers that are sitting on the mansion. And I think it creates an illusion of the annex now being much, much bigger. And I think that's, that, that's what's bothering me. And mm -hmm. if you want to align the cornice, my question to you would be, is there another way to make this annex continue to look like an annex by bringing the ridge down? Mm -hmm. Well, the now, ridge is, yeah, then let's go to, so, the ridge is, yeah, it, it, it depends a little bit on the angle that you're looking at, and maybe what we need is, is some more development of, of different angles, different ways of looking at this, different drawings mm -hmm. that would help us, mm -hmm. but I, I heard Dave say this, I heard Karen say it, I felt it, mm -hmm. I don't know about no. Martin, no, mm -hmm. um, so there's at least some concern about the relationship yeah. between the mansion right. and an annex that's now becoming. So I, I'll help you a little bit with that. Um, the annex, the, one of the things we were careful to do was keep the, the more diminutive window sizes, which are smaller than the mansion. The original annex windows are significantly smaller, so we're retaining that. Uh, the the uh, molding, the dental molding is completely different and subservient to the main house, so the windows are um, uh, of the more, uh, you know, are less predominant. The trim is less predominant. Uh, the ridge is lower, which are all things that we, you know, are always look for in a, in a um, secondary structure. It's also setbacks, you know, on on the sides coming in, so it's it's not flush with either, it's not the same width, it's significantly set back on one side and slightly set back on the other, again, in keeping with the original footprint. So really the only change is the 30 inch rise. Everything else remains the subservient size windows, subservient trim, subservient, everything is that lesser annex identity. Um, but uh, you know, and and the dormers are just what was on there. So you know that is the the dormers that were built when the annex. Uh, we're, we're trying to thread the needle between preserving it, but also opening up. Um, you know, it's really just unacceptable to have that cornice line just that you know Eve just ramming into that window sash. It's just. Yeah. Are there Carla, other... could I? Yes, John. Yes, uh, thank you, Margo. Um, how much of a lift do you need to clear that window? And have you thought about a larger, or no, excuse me, that's not the right word. Um, have you thought about extending the eaves of the annex a little bit further than they are now. So by extending them, it drops the, the soffit and the fascia board down, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Is there any way that you could split the difference is what I'm asking somehow or another? If you made the building uh, narrower, it would drop the eaves edge. Uh, no. No, if you look at 3.2. You have to extend that break of the roof plane. Yes, yes, it would only do it if you allowed if, yourself to break free of the soffit. If you look at 3.2, you can see how high up the windows on that uh, side on the uh, north elevation are in relation. They're right up, almost right up. It's into the roof edge trim, aren't they? That mm -hmm. photo, yeah. If you look at the photo in the upper right corner, you can really see 
how high that is. So you're never going to raise the soffit of your new or your annex roof. You're never going to raise the soffit of that. Mm. Uh, Why can't you lower the windows? <laughs> get above that. On the mansion? <laughs> no. No, on the uh, annex. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. I tell you anyway. what makes it subservient. The, the well, is you got smaller windows. Mm -hmm. You have a less formal quality. Mm -hmm. The main building is symmetrical. Mm -hmm. It's it's grand. It's it's got uh, major features. The annex has smaller windows. It's random. It it doesn't have the same formality. So the fact that that the eaves line up doesn't tell me that it's on equal par with this very stately front part of the of, of the complex. So the ridges don't match up. If you look past the widow's walk, you have a higher ridge. Mm -hmm. So to me, they're struggling with this. They're struggling to fix it. They're struggling to take out the that the error errors that were built into it, let's help them out. That's, that's the way I see. And there's and there's other voices here on the board I haven't heard from yet. So. Anybody else? Um, I definitely see how it changes when you match the cornices. It changes that line on that side. And just as looking at it as a flat picture, it makes it look very even. Um, if you do look at the east elevation, uh, you can see how, you know what I mean, it is, it's all hidden behind the main mansion. Mm. Um, I don't know, but I, I, I don't like that the chimney's gone, uh, that it is, you know, I consider that historic, um, the fact that it had like a use and everything. Um, but I can see where, if you walk by, I mean, my friend Christian used to live here, if you walk by in front, then you wouldn't see the annex, you know, if you're at the front door. Mm -hmm. but I can see what you're saying as well, DeMargo, how it makes it look like it is one continuous building on that side. Yeah. And it might look more like that because it is a flat picture, but I'm mm -hmm. not sure I'm not. Give us, give us some different angles. Yeah. Well, the, the one that John's referring to is actually, you know, more, it's not really a uh, pedestrian level view. It's a little really kind of raised up, which <coughs> does give you a more straight on mm -hmm. view so that you're not really perceiving the setback as much. Mm -hmm. um, but we could actually look at that from a, you know, more of a pedestrian vantage point and then, you know, you would really see that. Um, but yes, thank that you. Was part of our consideration um, when we, you know, were uh, exploring you know the chimney piece was you know where where which where is it visible from publicly I guess was our thought on that where, where exactly can we see that from but that that was what you know uh, on an upside I, I think the treatment of the uh, round sunroom on the back uh, the roof the edge of that and the roof of that is uh, you know right out of the park Oh, good. It says me. Just trying to be positive here. <laughs> I'd like to make one statement as well to address a concern that I think Reagan had, and I actually shared the concern when we looked at the annex in comparison to the mansion and how best to handle it. If you look at my report on page 10, there's just a, a picture of a window header there. Mm -hmm. And our intent, the detail that we will go through the mansion on the outside is going to be so painful <laughs> that that little piece of trim you see there is not going to receive caulking and then three coats of paint. That piece of trim will either have to be restored or a section of it taken off and be replicated. So once we go through the mansion and I'm learning more about the preservation efforts through speaking to the, uh, the company that's going to handle the windows. It's, a, it's going to be historic because we're dealing with old material that's been there for 200 years, but it's going to look crisp and clean because we've taken the care and the attention to detail to restore that. And I think that's where my mind had to shift is that preservation, I always looked at it as, well, you don't touch that. You just keep putting paint on it to make sure it stays there. <laughs> 
that's not the effort that the house will receive. It, it's it's going to have to be stripped back down to its very uh, original installation state mm -hmm. and get the treatment that it, it got back then, but also sort of with some of the modern uh, material, you know, paint, et cetera, that we do now to make sure it lasts another 200 years. And one other thing, not that I don't want to waste your time, but speaking to what Carla said about the historic fabric, I read this great opinion piece about historic fabric is, is created not only in the, the historic buildings that were built 200 years ago, but we should be with the mindset that the work that we do today is done in a manner that it will be historic fabric in another 200 years. Mm -hmm. And sort of discerning where that level is and, and having that in the work that we do. So I just want to make sure it's clear. With the annex, it was always a real struggle with, if we take this down, I don't want to have a, an older looking building with a new annex. But the truth of the matter is, is that the mansion isn't going to look old. It's going to look completely preserved and restored next to a building that will fit to it. So that's the mindset. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so there, is there anybody in the public on Zoom? Just because I have to ask. Doesn't look like it. OK. So with their hand up. <laughs> no. Okay, so wrapping up, I think that I just you've. Uh, did anyone else have any other comments about the round room or the, the porch area or other things? All good. okay, go ahead. Okay. Sorry. So, <laughs> it sounds like you have full support for the direction you're headed with regard to the mansion. Mm -hmm. um, full support for the idea of re having to rebuild a new annex but keeping the historic details that you've suggested you can keep the one big concern i'm hearing is the chimney mm -hmm. um, and i think in large part as reagan said because of the value of the historic value of what is underneath the mm -hmm. chimney that we all you know know about um, in addition to how it fits into the history of the annex itself. Whether it can be seen from the street or not, it is a big part of the annex. Um, but otherwise, I, th I think you're, you're right on track. Um, I'm not hearing any great concerns about the direction you're going. I think the devil is in the details at this mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. um, so would you like to come back next month? Or would you like some more time? Uh, no, I think we can pull it together. Um, so. I think we're just going to we'll come back for a public hearing. Straight to public hearing. Straight to public hearing. I think it's, you know, we, I don't know. We, you know. we have a few details to work out, but not much. On it's your call. I think so. Okay. So we need a motion to close the sure. work session? Yep. So move it. Second. Thank you. And a roll call vote. John? Uh, uh, yes. Reagan. Aye. Sam. Aye. Karen. Aye. Dave. Aye. Rich. Aye. Martin. Aye. Chair votes yes. Thank you, Carla. Okay. We will see you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any further business? May I have a motion to adjourn, please? So moved. Second. Everybody in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye.